What's up, honey love? What's up, girl? What's up, girl, honey love? I see you. What are you doing, real Sonia? What's up, Sonia? Fat, fat mama Sonia. What's up, fat, fat mama Sonia? What's up, fat, fat mama Sonia? What's up, Mayday? Lord Mayday. What's up, boy? What's up, Lord Mayday? What's up, my boy, Doc? What's say, Doc? Hmm? What's say, Doc? What you say, Doc? It's my big boy, Doc. What you say? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another week, another episode of Game Dog Talk. Thank you all for joining us. Yes, indeed, man. We got the, uh, a great panel, legendary panel. You know, Welcome Down Round will be joining us shortly. And uh, we got, of course, in the building, the legendary schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, thanks. Welcome, everybody. Yes, sir. And we got, of course, the legendary Rastaman Boone in the building. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. And, and, and big up massive, massive people stand tall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we got in the building my brother, Mr. Eli Zachary up in the building. What to do, Eli? What's going on? What's going on? Salute to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And like I said, Ram will be here shortly. And, um, so we'll we'll kick it for a minute. <clears throat> so how everybody week, uh, uh, schoolboy? How you been? How how was your week? Good, good, good. Just fighting this corona stuff. But other than that, man, it went by fast. Just busy, busy, busy. Yeah, man. But you, yeah. Yeah, you 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 still kicking, man. So you know you ain't gonna be. Still, yeah, out. yeah. I ain't. You know? uh, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think that shit is here to stay. Now I think everybody. Yeah. If yeah, you got it, if you ain't got it, you gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, eventually. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the flu, but it lasts longer. You know, right? It's, Absolutely. You got Absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Eli, how you? How was your week, bro? Shit, hey, that was cool, man. I shit here yeah. went got a little got a got a, a little uh, money and shit sit around and waited out this ice storm. Other than that, here all good, enjoying the family, kicking back here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rasta man, how was how was your your week, brother? Ah, uh, man, just uh, you know, it, it, it's like we we we, you know, it's snowing, then it's raining, then it's warm, then it's man. I guess I've been enjoying the differences. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. And uh, this hey, we got the young homie Blitz up in here, man. He gonna listen in. And just, just, just uh, check out. What's up, Bliss? How you doing, brother? What's good, everybody? How y'all doing, brother Bliss? How you doing, man? I'm hanging in there, OG. I'm just here. You feel yeah. me? I'm, 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 I'm taking in some knowledge. I ain't got too much to say right now. Yeah. How you doing, Blitz? I'm hanging in there, boss man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> salute, Blitz. Salute, salute. Oh, that's OG. What's good, baby? No, oh, this Eli. <laughs> what's oh, going on? Ram, what's good with you? Hey, look, I, look, it's all love for all y'all, man. It's all love. Most yes, oh, yes, Yeah, Eli got that. Uh, Eli got. I mean, uh, not Eli, but uh, Bliss got. A, hey, Bliss, turn down your music, bro. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we won't get no copyright music. copyright infringements. But yeah, Bliss got him a nice little uh, little bitch over there. Um, he took her to a a, a little show. And one with a two, she's a nice little, uh, little pretty little, um, uh, karate bitch and shit. You can get no pictures of her up, up on uh, I would, you can put Instagram. Up, I'm sorry, some would, pictures you could put up on your, um, uh, as your picture here. Your yeah, that's actually, actually, I was in the middle of doing that, and then you was like, What's good? So I'm about, I'm about to post one up right now. Yeah, go ahead and do that, bro. Gotcha. Let me scroll up and see what we got in the building thus far. Let me see who we got up in here. Uh, quick roll call <clears throat> BFS Kennels Salute, I see you in the building uh, Game Bread Pitbull Hall of Fame, salute to your family Luciano Salute to you uh, Mike Blanchard, salute John Kramer in the building George Mr. Anderson Miami Snoopy 305 up in here Salute, salute Hold on one second, y'all. Here we go. 
Uh, yeah, I'm getting some feedback somewhere. Let me put everybody on mute. Okay. Um, George, Mike, uh, uh, let me say Miami, three, Miami Snoopy 305. El, uh, El Dios de los Perros, salute. Uh, let me see here. Hugo, Lefty, American Pitbull Terrier, Smooth Monty in the building, salute family. Vinny, AJ, Grind Mode Kennels, Hardy Boys, Pennsylvania, Arrowhead Kennels, salute to you. Dogman RT, C, uh, CD Sean, uh, Adams Family, Cabo, Von C., um, Supreme Excellence, Mike Lee, salute to you. Um, Soul Power, aka Gamed Up Kennel, salute to you. Dogman D, Mark Wonderlynch, Bull, uh, Bull St uh, Stallion. Let's see here. Dogman Smoke, I mean, Game Dog Smoke, salute to you. Live Life Real in the building. Uh, lefty American Pitbull Terrier, Jimmy Mack, AJ, City Boy Kennel, salute to you, fam. Um, uh, Lace 704 Troy, SBO Kennels, Doug, uh, Robert Tucker. Let me see here. I can't read everybody. Much love and much appreciation, to everybody in the building. It's a lot of y'all in here. Thank y'all for joining us this week. Make sure I have your questions ready. We're gonna go through some questions that we got from um, for uh, Game Dog Talk this week, and then we're gonna answer your questions that y'all put in the super chats as well. All right, so let's go to the first question. Let's get it on. Let's see here. Um, all right, this question for the for the OGs here. It says, "Were Jocko dogs more devastating than Eli dogs?" Uh, from from what you guys have seen. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Garcia. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't see any pure Jocko stuff. The ones I saw were uh, the Jocko Red Boy. They were good. They were good all around dogs. You know, they were rough. The, you know, if you if you think like what people did in the past, you 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 put in you know, rugged hard mouth with uh, known gameness. You know, you do that if it works. You get a, a good all around athlete, you know, and and uh, it worked. It's it's a very popular bloodline. Jocko by himself was was like termite stuff. Those I think were the hardest biting ones, you know, from the termite or the uh, more like uh, maybe uh, Havana Boys, Rodney, Fred Moore along those lines, you know. Pure ones I didn't really see any of them, but you know they got a good reputation. Very popular. A lot of people like it. Carolinas, you know, made Carolinas famous. They were already famous before that. You know, the Carolinas were. That's where, uh, you know, Howard Teal, they did a lot of conventions over there. Right. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of Kobe dogs, you know. And uh, the Jocko stuff is just more on the Diablo side, you know, from the Mayfield stuff. So you, you cross the Kobe and Diablo, got what's called the old rugged cross is what Tudor used to call it continues right. to work you know it'll work always has worked and it always will work if you use the right dog right right okay um roster man uh what's your experience with uh jocko dogs versus eli dogs were the jocko dogs more devastating in your opinion i uh, i think in any family of dog you're capable of, of getting um dogs of being you know, uh, devastating nature. You know, the, the Jocko dog uh, had some Zebo in it. So, um, you know, when when people cross to mouth, they crossing to to try to get get that mouth. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, uh, like he was saying, uh, Scuba was saying, you know, the 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 yellow John dogs and uh uh they crossed that with the Jocko stuff uh Chavis and uh that that bunch and uh and they got some good crosses I seen some that was that was game I seen a, a bitch a female that came where well, it was Yellow John 
uh, Jocko across, and um, and she could bite. She could bite pretty good. Uh, I liked her, and then there was another one that uh, we had came by, and uh, we we sent her to Ohio, and, and she was killing everything they put on her. And uh, so, but that's that's been so many years ago. <coughs> You know, um, which one is the, the most devastating? <laughs> I don't know. I I seen some Eli dogs that uh, you know, uh, I think what the the saloon stuff, um, what's that? The little dog, little sister. Uh, I, I would say she about one of the hardest one of one of the hardest biting dogs I had witnessed. You know, uh, but anyway, that's that's all I had to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Eli, what's your uh, experience uh, with uh, Jocko dogs versus Eli dogs? I mean, I, I pretty much got to agree with uh, with with Ross and Schoolboy. My experience uh, personally was that you know each one of them presented their own their own good dogs throughout history, and in my in, in my time, when, you know, shit. 20 years ago or so when I first started getting really getting around uh, uh, these dogs and really getting going, those dogs were starting to be crossed into the yellow John stuff, uh, starting to be crossing, creating the yellow John and, and uh, uh, the termite stuff, the stuff that was really starting to build steam. Of course they had been years before me, but those, they, those were the hot dogs. Then it wasn't really pure, uh, 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 per se, cause there's no such thing as a pure dog. It wasn't really pure Jocko dogs, but, those were the Jocko dogs that were out there. And then you had the Shavis line of Jocko stuff. And then you had the little like uh, uh, V Jackson crosses, which were paint. But I mean, that's what created Jocko and stuff. But they were solid dogs. I mean, as far as in comparison of one to the other, to me, each one could hold their own with the, with the other. So it's really like no serious comparison there. It's just you got good dogs from from both of them. If you were asking, could the could the Jocko dogs hold their own? Yeah, of course. As I I would absolutely say yes. And and in all things with these dogs, it depends on your source of where you got it from, of uh, how they actually perform. So, you know, that's 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 my answer on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, we got a question here that says, uh, does the panel have any examples? Uh, in y'all experience, historically, of course, of shy dogs, uh, having a shy dog, but that dog turning into a great performer. Uh, we'll start with uh, with you, uh, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, I had one from uh, from Don Broke. He was a he was a Jeep Rascal dog named uh, uh, Dawson, and he was he was scared of his own shadow, and uh, I couldn't hardly work him. I mentioned him before, but the only thing I could do with him was flirt pull him on his chain. If you walk up to him, he'd run away and, and hit the end of his chain about to break his neck, you know, just real squirrely. Couldn't hand walk him, couldn't treadmill, couldn't do nothing with him. But when you face him up, he'd do what he's supposed to do. I won with him, then I sent him back to uh, sent him back to Broat. He won two more. I won in 31 with him and Broat won in uh, – he won in an hour, 10, hour 11 and 10 minutes. And then there was, uh, you know, that white blood we talk about. There was, I lost to a bitch named champion Nikki. She was double bred champion alien. And uh, she was like that real shy, introverted, you know, stay in her dog house. But man, you face her up and she would go to work. She was a good bitch. There's been, there's been a bunch of them, you know, that snake dog was, Supposedly squirrely like that. He produced grand champion Snake Jr. You know, my buddy had a female off of him, real game, real rough. Uh, there, there's been a bunch of them throughout history, you know. Sometimes it's it's the way that they're brought up, you know. A lot of times, you know, dog men in the past, the dogs didn't hardly ever leave their yard, you know. Uh, so you don't get any outside influence. You don't, they don't socialize with anything else and they can get real introverted, real shy and coy, you know, and some are just born that way with the most of them. You can work with them, bring them out of that shyness, but some you can't that Dawson, you could never, 
he was grown when I got him. That he was going to be that way for the rest of his life. He was just, and I think a lot of it had to do. He was isolated, and maybe you know there's something in his background that had dogs like that, his mother or father or something. But but uh, most of the time you can work with them and get them out of it. You know, the best thing I say is is put them with kids. You know, like we mentioned before, kids will bring right. it out on usually. Especially if the younger you get them, the, the better it is, you know, out of that shell. But yeah, there's I'm sure there's been tons of them, you know. Those are the, probably the two I was most familiar with. Yes, sir. Salute to Meredith Campbell in the super chat with that 50 piece. Giannis, appreciate the love, man. He says, what's good, family? This is my contribution to the book you brothers are going to write. Salute and blessings to you. Thank you, Brother Mary Campbell. Appreciate the love, fam. Salute, Thank Mary. You, <laughs> salute, salute. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, let me ask uh, Rasta Man, any experience with uh, uh, shy dogs turned into great performers? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I had one. Um, um, she would uh, drop her tail. It wouldn't be between her legs, but it'd just be, instead of out, it'd be down. Mm-hmm. And once once she got going, then the tail come up. But when you bring her to face her, her tail be down. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of, you know, it was just funny, you know. But uh, anyway, she turned out to be a damn good dog. Mm. So, uh, you know, you, 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 you'll find some have different character, man. And, um, you know, it's all about being able to adjust to who they are. You know what I mean? Yes, and, uh, and, 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 and as you can do that, they'll, they'll become comfortable enough to, 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 you know, to relax, you know what I mean? But, when they get all tensed up and, and wired out like that, you know, you, you, you got to, you know, be patient with them. Don't don't force nothing because they already in, in that uh, that's that, that 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 not really rebellion. But it's you know, there ain't no trust there. You know, there's it's the trust. And then you got some like school boys here. They just going to be that way. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, it's. I, that don't mean you got to get rid of it. You know, you still can keep her or let her go to a friend or somebody that would take care of a pet or whatever the case may be. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, that, remi- that reminds me of uh, a, bo- a dog named Boozer. He was a three-time winner. That's how he, he would fight the whole way with his tail down like that. Tucked <laughs> almost, you know. And he he was uh, he was off of four bits and a Heinzel female, I think. And uh, he was a nose dog. He uh, he went into uh, uh, Don another Don Broat dog. It was a brother to uh, Broat's Dottie named Pirate. He was a one time winner, and he he's the one who broke the Sosa boys' unbeaten streak. They were eighteen wins and two draws, and he beat Sosa boys' boxcar in a, a little over an hour. He broke that streak. He was a good dog, but Boozer got on his nose, man. And with that tail tucked like that, and the whole way, uh, all it got to him like the first five, ten minutes, you know, he was rough, hard biter. And after that, he just he basically removed his nose. Pirate scratch with his chin on the ground and his nose on the side, man. Almost two hours, real game dog. So yeah, mm-hmm. Rasta mentioned that. That that reminded me of that boozer he tail tucked dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Brother Eli, what's your, what's your thoughts on that, man? Oh, yeah, they can definitely be good. I mean, I recall, I can recall uh, a, a, a carver, a uh, bolio a bread mill, heavy on the banjo on top, and with the uh, uh, old, uh, what's that? The old Sin City Spunk stuff uh, uh, on bottom, that Patrick stuff, and he was real, real spooky, wouldn't wide eyed, stay away from you, but Otherwise, was an animal, smart, steady, not the fastest, but just smart, steady, durable animal, you know, and he was a good one. I can remember. It's not something that I can say. I used to think back in the day, oh, this bloodline was like this. This blood, it wasn't. It was more to 
their environment and them being raised. Some bloodlines kind of have it a little bit more, but I've seen it in the Carver Bolio cross. I've seen it in a six bits, uh, 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 nigga Toby Maverick, Maverick cross. I've seen it in a wild side, uh, in a heavy wild side animal. So it's not something that's just pronounced to one bloodline or anything. You kind of take them for who they are. You do your best to socialize them. I seen uh, uh, one that I took to uh, confirmation shows. And as I took her to confirmation shows and she got used to being around the people and being being excited in, 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 uh, in, in the show ring during a during confirmation, she slowly came out of her shell and she started, you know, the judges would come up to her and check her teeth and everything. And she got used to being handled and touched by other people. And she got used to other people being around her and she changed. She just became a more confident, socialized dog where she was before. Like like schoolboy alluded to earlier, she had not been socialized. She had not been taken off off of that yard and walked and been around people. She just was a dog that was just on the chain that, that was just there. And once I got her out and started traveling with her, she came out of it. I did it again with a snooty, a snooty balls mill. He was real shy, real, real shy. And I took him and would put him in the car with me and ride him around with me and would take him to the shows and would walk him to the park. And like the schoolboy said, let the kids come up and pet him and stuff because he didn't feel like they was a threat. And he came out of it. So just socialization, a big part of it and environment. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> I saw this question in the chat. Uh, I'm going to run it backwards to you, Eli. He says, uh, let's uh, salute to Rose Kennels. He says, let's say my dogs are scatterbred and crossbred. Can I breed two litters together, brothers, uh, brother and sister, same uh, uh, for the same, from the same litter? Wait a minute, hold up. Let me get that again. Let me get a little confuse me. He said, let's say my dogs are scatterbred and crossbred can I breed two litters together, brother and sister, off the same litter to throw a consistent look and um, uh, get the get the traits I want? I'm I'm glad you brought that up. You remember uh, uh, yesterday I, in our little group, I said I said something about something like this, right? Things like back crossing and line breeding and and uh, uh, out cross and you know inbreed. Those are tools in breeding. And part of that being a tool is exactly what you're saying. It's part of that being to express and clean up a gene pool, to express the traits that you want, to get them to come out and show themselves and to have that selection, that selective breeding process. So, yes, you can absolutely do that because those individuals that you get off of that breeding, you can start to turn. That's how breeders actually start to turn that line into the type of dogs that they like, the attributes that they like. If you like, if you like a good, smart, fast dog, you pick the athletes that are fast and skilled out of those breeds, and you move forward with those with with those particular animals, and you breed around those, and that starts to turn into that starts to change your line and scope your line into what it is. If you're looking for a certain look, a certain structure, a certain build a certain color that's going to be a marker. You have some old timers like uh, that, whose name were brought up last week. Uh, I'm forgetting, but I remember the conversation. They believed in markers in their line in that generation. People put markers in that generation by look, you have certain dogs to have buckskin black mass in a generation. And it's like, they know they bred that generation with these two dogs. So when it comes back, it shows uh, and, and they believe that you, have people like Don Mayfield that love the, the black dogs, the English bred blood that he said, you know, and it was like a marker that was in there. Or you can see the Irish when the red was expressed, it showed the crosses and the recessive genes. So, yes, absolutely. Long, long story short, absolutely, yeah. You you use those breeding tools, the breeding methods, line breeding, out crossing, back crossing, which most people don't talk about, using older individuals and bringing grandparents to the forefront. And you can get that. You can get those traits that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mr. Garcia, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. When you have, uh, you know, a lot of outcrosses like that, scatterbred, like you said, you know, the, the thing to do would be to tighten up on them. You know, you can brother, sister, father, daughter, mother, son. You know, when you breed brother, sister, the hope is you get the traits from both sides. You know, the father, daughter, you're, you're trying to concentrate on the, 
sire, mother, son, you're concentrating on the, on the dam. But uh, if they're, if they're scatterbred or outcrossed like that, the thing to do would be to tighten them up. And the more you know about the ancestors, the immediate ancestors, the parents, grandparents, great grandparents, when, when you make those breedings, you'll, you'll see where, what, uh, what, where the traits are coming from. And then like Eli said, you're going to concentrate on the traits you like by simply using the dogs that express those traits. And with that, you can, you can build, you can build a family of dogs off of that, you know, and you can go back to, a, a, you know, if you, when you make that inbreeding, then you can, then you can line breed it after that. Let's say you breed brother and sister. You can take the pups off of that, go back to the father or the mother. You can go back to the grandfather. You can go back to the cousins. You can breed aunt to, to nephew, you know, uncle to niece like that and, and establish a foundation of traits, whichever ones you like. That's that's uh, you know most breeders, including Heinzel, Tudor, Carver, you name it, Colby, you name them. Their their bloodlines once they were established, they they generally come from several different bloodlines or several different dogmen, and and they just they just breed them the way they want, capturing the traits that they admire or they want to retain, and then go from there. And and that's when you start to get a look of particular bloodlines, you know, Eli's dogs look a certain way, you know, Bolio dogs look a certain way, Carver dogs look a certain way, you know, because those breeders captured those traits, retained them, and were able to pass them on to the individuals they use. So, yeah, short answer is inbreed them and, uh, and go from there. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we got a question here for uh, Roster Man Boone. He says, Boone, could you share your thoughts on the Irish Jerry dogs slash uh, JJ bred dogs? Yeah. Um, the, how that got going was uh, the, the, the drill bit dog that I had. Um, we won five with him and lost three with him. And the uh, three we lost with her, they went right at three hours. Uh, I sold her sister to a, a young fellow. Her name was Busy. And uh, some kind of way, him and Iris Jerry got together. And Iris Jerry contacted me and asked me about um, if I had bred the bitch. And I told him, yeah. And, um, and they bred. Uh, was it Quarter John? Not Quarter John. Quarter John. I, I, was it Quarter John? I forget the dog name. I was Jerry bred to the, the busy bitch. She was off my crazy red dog and Trevor. Trevor was off uh, Mr. Boy dog and uh, Brandy Girl. And um, Crazy Red was off of Witless Ike and Witless Bam Bam. And uh, so got a lot of good dogs out of that, that little. And that's how JJ, that's, that's, he come down off that stuff. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, one day uh, Jerry called me. He said, look, man, you, you welcome to come and do any dog on my yard. He said, I made this cross. He said, I really, really like it. I think uh, Mona Watts got some of them dogs now. Well, not just her, there's a whole lot of people, you know. You know how it go. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, thanks sir. for the question, brother. Uh, uh, thanks for the question, whoever that brother is. Uh, Cervantes, yes, sir. Salute to you, man. Uh, Chief Killer Ho, back in that super chat. Appreciate you, man. Came through. He shut it down last week. Salute to you. Welcome down, Rab. Big Stepping, you in the building, bro? What up, bro? Yeah, my bad, man. I was fucking around on the yard and shit. I ain't even know where it started, man. <laughs> Well, that's all good. It's all good, bro. Oh, man, salute, salute, cuzo. Yeah, cuzo. Fucking with that fucking flirt pole and shit. It's good when you got one like to fuck with it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's who that dog in that picture, man? Oh, that's a uh, dog named Star. Motherfucking uh, off of uh, Gunny to some old family red stuff, and Gunny was off of uh, Cuervo. 
that, that's who a bitch. Was little gator. Yeah, that ooh, bitch ooh, diesel as fuck. Yeah, that's that's a mean looking bitch there. Is that that yeah. old? Is that that old raspberry? Uh, 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 old family red nose stuff. Uh, I ain't hit red danger. Old. Yeah, some of that. Yeah, some I of that. that no, no oh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, that bitch, she, she built like a dude there. Like we yeah. were saying, that look, you can see that look. <laughs> yeah, that bitch like a dyke. <laughs> that one CC <laughs> was fighting. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh, what's up, Lil Rock? Salute. Grand Devastation in the building. Salute to y'all. See y'all. Then we got, uh, let me see here in the super chat. We got. Uh, Mr. Anderson in the super chat, much love and much appreciation. He says, um, "What was the most uh, anticipated breeding or puppy that the panel was waiting for?" That's a good question, because I know everybody had that one breed, and they like, "Oh yeah, this from the kill it, this from the kill it." Let me start with you, Mr. Garcia. What, what was that breeding for you? Uh, it was uh, let's see, our champion Bill to Lucy. Bill was off a of big red and sissy, a inbred. Uh, Jeep female Lucy was off a of champion ninja and big red sister Miss Rowdy and I was real high on those pups it was only there was only four of them in the litter but all four of them were winners all four of them were game I bred the females they produced good uh, let's see there was uh, champion K she won three Billy Jr. won two and lost in two and a half hours um what was her name? Bambi. She won two. And then Hammer, he beat a four-time winner in an hour, 40 minutes. And those were that was probably my, my favorite litter, my most anticipated one, because it was all my stuff, a few generations of my stuff put together. And uh, they were just good, solid dogs, and they were crazy and wild and, and good with kids and, you know, good mm -hmm. mothers. Just, they were tough, man. All them, I rolled them all. Like, I would roll them with their daddy. I roll them with their mama, with sisters, cousins. All that. I roll the shit out of them with each other, you know, on my yard. <laughs> yeah. And they all, I didn't care what they weigh. If they were too big, I'd just hold the legs down of the bigger one or throw them <laughs> down, lay on them and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Even, even it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just so be fair, you know, Kay was tiny. She was only, she was low 30s. I rolled her with her sister, but she was about a 35, 36 pound dog. And Bambi was beating her ass. So I grabbed Bambi by the back legs and flipped her over and held her down. Like <laughs> Kay thought she was killing her, man. <laughs> but you yeah. just do stuff like that. There's all kinds of, you know, you could even it up or, you know, where it ain't so one sided, you know. Right. But they was all all good, solid dogs. I only bred the females and they all they both produce good dogs. In fact, my buddy. One of the foundation bitches for his yard was off of was off of K, K and Mister Rowdy. Yes, sir. Salute to everybody who's coming in the building. We got some hitters in here, man. Salute to everybody. I see you, General Washington, uh, Urban Wolves Kennels. I see you in here, uh, Brandon Blue, Rude Boy. Salute, salute. Um, <clears throat> Rasta Man Boom. What's your uh, what's your what's your, uh, your, your what was your most anticipated? Breeding that breeding that had you up at night waiting on them puppies. Well, um, the first time that I bred Lady Stone, and uh, I was like, Man, you know, um, she had I think it was about she had a few puppies. But her stomach was still big, and I just felt like she had some more damn puppies in her. And so uh, I took her to the vet, and uh, I requested that he do a C-section. But why he do the C-section, I just want to be able to see it. You know, I just want to, you know, watch it. And he told me, no, couldn't do that. And I was like, what you mean? I, I don't understand. You know, ain't no, you know. I don't understand. Oh uh, no, you you know you you got to go out there in the lobby and you wait out there. I was like, you know what? I tell you what, let, let me take my dog, and uh, I'll get it done. So uh, I got the dog and I called another veterinarian. And I said, listen, man, all I want to do is watch you take these puppies out of her stomach. That's it. You know, she done had a few of them. They died. 
I said, I just feel like it's some more in him. And uh and he did. And uh it was uh three. We got three puppies out of there. And uh they live a one one with one male and then uh match one male twice and one one and lost one. And then the sister, I won two with her, and we was going for our championship, and the little freak accident, you know, uh, one 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 of my buddies, uh, I was on the road, and uh, it was during the summertime, and uh, he closed the the building up with uh, no air condition on, no fan, no nothing, and left her in the building. Uh, Running the slap meal. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. So that, but uh, then uh, I took uh, the one that I won with. I bred him to uh, so uh, the puppies was off of Willie's Ike and Lady Stone. So I took one of the males and I bred him to his brother, daughter. And uh, and then I had a man. I had a yard full of them motherfuckers, man, screaming, man, jumping, flying, man. I got, I got, I got big plans. But you know, we done made a good run. You know what I mean? We done made a good run. And uh, I said, well, you know, we just kicking back. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't up to nothing. And all of a sudden, I was out of state, and I came in, I flew in, picked up my my kids from uh, private school. And I pull in my driveway, and they got sheriff from the back of my yard all the way to the front of my driveway. Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck? And um, I had a, it's ironic we talk about a termite dog. I had a termite dog that I had got from Perry Powell, and the dog eyelash would stay rolled up on the eyeball. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And it'd yep. be that that coal in the eye, you know what I mean? So yep. every every day this dog eyes had to be cleaned out. So whether I was here to do it or whoever I had doing it, they had to do that because you know it just it just it just stayed, you know, cold in the eye. So I had the surgery done. I think he charged me, the vet charged me about three hundred dollars. And what they did, they went in there and lanced some of that skin out. And pull the eyelid up so it stay the uh, eyebrow stay off. The, I mean the uh, eyelash should stay off the eyeball. And so I pull up in my driveway, and uh, you know I got my kids with me. So I'm like, damn. I told my kids, I said, listen, y'all go straight to the house, call your uncle, and then go next door and let them come pick you up. You know what I mean? So I can handle this. So I get up here. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Uh, we got a call. You've been uh, doing dogs and this and that. I said, man, I just flew in. Here's my plane ticket. What you talking about? Uh, well, you know, uh, we got to check the dogs and this and that. I'm like, yeah, okay, go ahead. Y'all check the dogs. And uh, then they come back and they said, well, you got one that's been been fighting. I said, what you mean? Yeah, that one right there. I said, that's a puppy, man. That's That's not a grown dog. That's a puppy. Oh, well, it's been, I said, no. I said, the dog has surgery. I said, we can call a veterinarian or the, the bill is on the, the desk here. You can look at that. And um, that's when uh, the, 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 the officer told me, said, we ain't got to look at nothing. I was like, well, damn. But what y'all come here for? Because you damn sure didn't come here for doing nothing right. If, if, if you saying it like that. And uh, man... That, that that thing hurt so goddamn bad, man. Cause at that time, I done got dogs off Lady Stone. I got dogs off of Crazy Red. I got dogs off of Nimrod. The yard is, you know, at that time, I rolled a couple of them and man, shit. We had went to some shows and motherfuckers were like, damn, them motherfuckers bite harder than everything we seen this weekend. <laughs> but anyway, man, so... Uh, yeah, that was really uh, some. In, I, I was anticipating to do a lot with this, with that flock that I had right there. It was about, I think they took about 35, 40 dogs. Damn mm. shame. 
Yeah, yeah. man, I was damn. Man, damn, damn. Sam. Damn. And look, and this is the thing. I was like, yo, I said, listen. It was like, oh, well, we just going, you know. I said, man, you can't put them dogs in the same thing. You see, they was on the chain by themselves. You can't put them in them cages to go. Oh, I guess we can't put both of them in there. Man, they had that fucking truck rocking going out. <laughs> Dumb asses. Hey, look here. I know when they got got wherever they were going, the blood everywhere. I'm telling you, bro, them motherfuckers, you can you can see the, the back of the truck just going side to side. I'm talking about, and they just throwing two dogs in us, put two in the in the in the in thing. Man, man, is y'all crazy? And I couldn't believe, but anyway, you know that was some. Uh, I was really anticipating on seeing what that that crew were gonna look like, you know, because they looked good. And and the other guy that asked us about that breed, and I'm, I meant to say this. I want to get back to you. Is the you know all the fellas said everything correct, but the, the the one thing that a lot of people don't do is they be looking for certain things in certain breeds. Okay, well, the only way to get what you're looking for is you got to keep them. Yeah. You can't, you can't breed them and say, well, I'm going to keep two. This is it. That, it don't go like that. Yep. You got to keep every damn one of them. If you want to know exactly what you're doing and what you got, when you make them breedings, you got to keep every damn one of them and then make your assessment as they become of age. Yep, true. But if you're getting rid of them before then, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're on a hope and a prayer. Yep. But that's what I used to do. I would breed and I'd keep all of them. Damn it, I have. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then you don't see what you got. Yeah, but go ahead. I'm, I'm through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. That's, so they just took the damn dogs. I'm still stuck on that part. Uh, uh, Man, I'm still I'm still hurting from that shit, man. It, it was like, you know, I mean, I swear, man, that that, that shit hurt, man. I, I, man, I, I was like, man, I, I couldn't believe it, and you know, and and somebody called them on me, and uh, the girl told me, you know, she said, look, you know, they had an anonymous caller to call in, and. Uh, you know, because I knew one of the girls, and she used to 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 to, to uh, help when I would do food and stuff like that for homecoming and special events. And she just wanted to make a little side money. She, you know, she was one of them girls clean up at the pound, you know, clean up and um, all that stuff. And she was like, "Man, that was fucked up." But you know, that's how they do us, though, brother. Yeah, they, they, they murder them dogs, man. Uh, when they come to us, it don't even be about what's right. Right. You see what I'm saying? See, I would respect the situation more if I, I, I had been doing it and then they came. Okay, you called me. I can't, I can't bitch about that. But yeah. damn it, you 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 took a puppy. You 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 looked at a puppy that has surgery and a bill, and I offered to call the veterinarian right there. And you could have talked to him, but instead, yeah, nah, we ain't got to do that. You know, we're going to take the dogs, you know. And and that's that's why they took the dogs, you know. And, man, I was so sick. Man, that was a sick-ass feeling, man. It was a real hurt feeling. And, and, you know, for many years, and believe it or not, man, I ain't even take the chains up. Right. You know, I, I was cutting some trees down in my backyard. I found a star with a chain with with the tall and every damn thing on. Yeah, it it could be it, it, as tragic as it was for the dogs. It was tragic for my 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 heart. You know what I mean? Because the one thing about the dogs, they love you, bro, unconditionally. No matter if your ass fought and it stink. The motherfucker still love your ass. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's so, true. Yeah, man. Uh, so it, it, it really hurt, man. But uh, you know, I'll never forget it. And then I had about 35 of them 
you know, uh, where I live is a big old creek, anywhere between 60 to 100 feet wide, and, and I don't have of it. And, uh, and it's a it's long, long distance, too. You know, it goes a long way. And uh, I had about 35 of them to, to – I didn't know that it would – the water would come up as high as it, it would. And, uh, man, man, I, 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 man, it was on New Year's. It was like New Year's Eve. So me and the old lady, you know, we done went – to one of our friends' house, we hanging out and shit. And uh, we come back, you know, and I see the water at the bridge, you know. I said, damn, that shit has a motherfucker, you know. So we coming on up the driveway. So I hear one of my dogs, he like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I never forget that sound, man. And I'm like, damn, I ain't never heard him sound like that. I said, damn, damn, man, I'm drunk and shit. That's when I was drinking a little bit. I said, damn, I'm fucked up and shit. You know, me and the old lady done hung out New Year's. You know what I mean? I right. said, shit, I'll go down there in the, in the morning. I'm going to go to sleep. Man, I went down there, man. I ain't seen no fucking dogs, man. All mm. I seen was water. Damn. <laughs> was, uh, fuck. Hey, and them dogs there, they was uh, inbred Zebo dogs, bite like hell. And uh, and I and I had some um, uh, Madeline's outlaw, uh, red boy cross uh, down off the Ike Bam Bam stuff. I had uh, male and females. Man, them motherfuckers, woo boy, they they was the package, man. But uh, anyway, I, I lost a lot of dogs that I know I would have did a lot of things with, but you know sometimes things happen, man. And, I said, damn, man, that was that was a crucial vibe going through all that and, and then still able to maintain the blood that I had right. from back then. You know, because if I hadn't put dogs in, you know, like, you know, I put one here, one there, one here, one there, you know what I mean? But I'm keeping up with them, you know what I mean? And uh, so yeah. I was I was able to you know, be able to, you know, get it, you know, just because I, I, I made sure I, I, I kept Kept one or two here, there, you know what I mean, and uh, and uh, but uh, that that was my journey, bro. So uh, if if I could have got uh, that that crew that I lost when they came in here and took, man, that that crew there would have been ooh, good, great. And the crew <laughs> before that, that I lost that I lost down there, and them them some bitch, man, everything was on fire, and and the dogs that I created between those two times, I took. Them dogs and bred to one another. Then after uh, beating Blondie and seeing her, I was like, "Shit, I need to get me something off of this stuff." So uh, I bought uh, uh, two sisters off uh, uh, Jeep and Whitey. I bought two bitches off there, and uh, then I bred that to my dogs. And so you know, and I was just able to just keep going. You know what I mean? But all praise yeah. to the Most High, man. I, I had some some tough. Times, <laughs> hey, yeah. But, you, but you're here though. You're here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> salute to Chief Killerho in the super chat. Much love, much appreciation, family. He says, "Does any of the group have info on the Buck his dogs? We love those Buck uh, Red Boy dogs around here. <clears throat> I think one of the homies uh, got some of that, or has some. I don't know if he still do. I can check for you. Uh, Ram, you got any info on that?" Yeah, I ain't seen no good buckets dogs in a minute, bro. I couldn't even tell you. Okay. All right. I thought one of our homies uh, had some of it. I thought I seen it. I got to ask him. I got to look at it and see. Uh, I thought he did. <clears throat> I could have swore I seen some. But we'll let, uh, I'll let you know uh, next show, uh, uh, Chief Killerho. Anybody on the panel? Any any info on the buckets dogs? Okay. All right. Bulldog Kid in the Super Chat, much love, much appreciation, says, what's your definition of a true competitor? Is it the quality of dogs or the quality of the dog man? Um, let's start with you, uh, Brother Eli. For me, it's, it's, it's both, but the quality of a dog man proves the quality of, of a dog and the quality of the dog shows the, uh, 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 the standards of a dog man. That standard that that dog man set 
is is what is what brings out the quality. So overall, it starts with the dog man. You know, I mean, you you can put a great dog in the wrong hands, and they can get completely fucked off. But if you put a great dog in good hands, it it'll, it'll show you a lot. And also, same thing. No matter what aspect of it you, you you talk about, whether you're talking about breeding, conditioning, or uh, uh, handling, whichever whichever uh, aspect of it that you're talking about, no matter you will you will you will encounter the fact that it takes a good dog man, it takes a good man behind them to actually prove and show. So, I, I would say uh, to be a good uh, to show the quality competitor. You have to look at the you have to look at the dog man first. All right. Brother Ram, what's your take on that, brother? Gotta agree with cuz O Eli, man. You gotta be a fucking good quality dog, man, to not mm-hmm. fuck off no good dog. If you ain't a good quality dog, man, or just a good quality man in general, you ain't gonna get blessed with the good dogs. And when you do get them, you're gonna fuck them off. I done seen so many motherfuckers get dogs like two time winners. Don't do them. Breed them. Lose them in an accident. Lose all the offspring in an accident. <clears throat> you know, just dumb shit like that. So if you're not a top shelf dog, man, you can fuck up, you know, good quality shit. And a lot of good quality bloodlines and went to the wayside because of motherfuckers not being top shelf dog men. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was grubbing. Oh good, oh good. Uh uh Mr. Garcia, what's your take on it? Yeah, you gotta have a good dog first. You know, that that's 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 the first thing. And uh like Eli and and uh Ram said, you gotta be a good you gotta know what you're doing. You know, I've been entrusted with some some dogs from friends and you know, fellow dog man, you know. And honestly, when I get a dog from someone else, I kinda uh, I used to, you know, treat them a little better than my own dog because, you know, they're entrusting me with their dog. Right. So I want to make sure all my focus is on that. I, I would get them and, and compete with them, you know. So for that time that I had them, you know, I, I would just do that, put all the attention on that, you know, get used to them, bond with them, clean them up, um, teach them how to work and all that. But if you don't know what you're doing, you know, which is something that's been said for a millennia almost, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, Tudor said it too. You can give, you could give spike to a guy that don't know what he's doing. He'll fuck him up. You know, and he was a great dog. So anytime you compete, the dog itself matters. You got to have a good dog. You, you can get by with average or even below average sometimes, but, at the, at the top level where, where, you know, you're amongst your peers and they're at the top of their game, you got to have a good dog. And then the person behind it has to know what they're doing. That comes with experience. It's not easy. It takes time. You're going to make mistakes along the way. Just don't repeat them. And, uh, that, that's, that's what'll make you a good competitor. Have a good dog and know what you're doing. Yes, sir. I remember a uh, <clears throat> dog man told me one time, and uh, I was trying to get this this puppy up off of him from a real good litter. And he said, uh, so I'm, so I'm going to sell you this puppy, man, but listen, don't fuck up this dog, man. Don't fuck. I said, what you mean? I'm not going to fuck the dog up. He said, listen, this dog is going to act right. It's going to act right real early, and you're going to be tempted to do some stupid shit. Don't fuck up this dog, man. Get the dog a fair chance. Don't fuck up this dog. And I understood what he was saying, but he was just so adamant because he said, man, so many people come around and want these dogs and they fuck them up. They get them. They get so excited because the dog is <clears throat> acting good at a young age. And then they jump out there. And then when the dog, you know, gets fucked up, they, you know, they don't take no responsibility. They just, they say, oh, the dog was a cur. You know, that's what they do. They throw the cur jacket on the dog. Uh, but Brother Boone. Uh, question yeah. here from Bull- Bulldog Kid has a question for you. He says, uh, uh, salute to you, Bulldog Kid. He says, Boone, which dog showed you, or how long do you feel it took you to prove to yourself that you could compete on a high level, historically speaking? Um, I 
I didn't know. Um, all I wanted to do when 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 I was younger is one of the four: win, lose, draw, or pick up, and the 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 joy of being competitive was uh, just deep within me. I, you know, in the projects, you know, we would box every day, you know, every day we, we get off the, you know, how many people jump off the bus, run home to go get hit upside the head? You know, I mean, that's what we used to do every day. You know what I mean? I mean, we were laughing. Boy, we're going to get you today, boy. You know, we run into the house, change clothes, and then we go down there with the gloves at, and then, man, it's on. You know, we out there for two, three hours. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, to compete is, 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 is not to look for no accolades or to feel that you uh at a certain level to compete, you, you just want to be as best and good as you can be. I don't care what, what level it is. You know what I mean? You, you, you want, you want to be good. You know what I mean? Now you ain't going to always win them all, but you know, good is being a good sport about it. You know what I mean? You know, uh, being a, a gentleman, you know what I mean? Cause you know, sometimes you lose. So how are you going to act when you lose? You, you're going to act like a clown. You're going to, you know, you're going to accept your losses like you would accept your win. You know, that makes a big difference in, in who you are, man. And, uh, but, you know, to, you know, to, you got some guys, you know, they they get emotional when they lose and and uh, they find themselves sometimes, uh, you know, nobody wanting to really deal with them. You know what I mean? Because, you know, who want to be dealing with a damn fool? You know what I mean? If you're gonna do anything, you want to make sure that you 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 you, you know you're gonna get back to your to your family and all that shit. You know that's what you're looking at. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't, you ain't looking at those no crazy shit. That's the way it was back then. You know. So uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, little bro. Um, how long to prove? Um, I I don't know, man. Uh, I just I just I was just competitive, man. When I was doing it. I ain't look for no accolades or nothing like that. I just, I love the camaraderie. I love the brotherhood. I love all that. I mean, you know, it just, man, it's just a, a joy to, to, to be connected with guys that had your same, you know, thoughts. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what drove me. Yes, sir. Hey, I can, I, I, I just want to chime in on it and it's going to be short and sweet. When you look, when you look at the person, that you're looking across at and you really truly respect them. And when you truly respect that person that you're looking across uh, across from, and you really truly respect the, the 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 animal that you're looking at, and when you when you at that point and you know you gave it your best and and, and you satisfied, that's when you know. Yes, sir. Shout out to Tay Tay Brown, Sugar Tay Tay Brown in here. Ain't that a pretty woman? Look at that pretty woman. Yeah, let me see. We got. Hey man, next subject, man. <laughs> oh, we'll get off Tay Tay. Yes, I like Tay Tay. I like Tay Tay. We're gonna be calling you in a minute. <laughs> Hell no, we ain't no bowl. No, no, no. I ain't my top on it. Hell yeah, no, no, no. With the big ass <laughs> finger. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Chief Killerho in the super chat. Appreciate the love, family. He says, appreciate y'all. Tell my man Ram he just ain't looking hard enough or far enough east. Yes, indeed. He talking about I think he's talking about the buckets, dog. <coughs> Let me see here. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, salute to uh Robert uh Tucker in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation with that 50 piece Giannis up in here, man. You know, what I mean he says. On episode sixty, y'all said, "Oh man, you asked the question that we're gonna get. We was gonna get to that question, but I appreciate you the super chat." He says, "On episode sixty, y'all said pups gene pool from the ancestors." He says, "So uh, would it be okay to get a pup from someone who doesn't work the mother or father, but the second and third generation, and um, so on, are working bulldogs?" But uh, but to not know if the parents are working dogs. Okay. Good question. Excellent question. 
Uh, what's your take on that, uh, Mr. Garcia? Well, if that's your, you know, sometimes you only have so many options. If that's your options, you know, which is limited because you don't know what the parents are about, but the, the behind that, there's a history of it. Then, then, you know, you would just have to go for it. And then from that point on, you would, you would, you know, and I'm talking back in the day, because there were some breeders that didn't, didn't uh, really check their dogs, you know, and people would still get dogs from them. And that would be the situation they're in. They take those pups and work with them. If they turned out, they use them. If not, they get rid of them, you know. Uh, but but sometimes you have options like that. Like somebody asked in my in my group, you know, would you would you breed a female, you know, untested female, you know, if you're starting out and that's all you got, would you breed her, you know, and and try and and uh, make a foundation out of that or or try and and make something out of that. And my answer to him was, you know, if that was the only option I had, yeah, I'd take her, breed her, wouldn't touch her. And then, you know, I wouldn't do it again. Everything after that, I would check. And, and uh, you know, you just you just go with, with what works and call the rest, you know. Because in, in some cases, you don't have a lot of options, especially if you're starting out, you know. And I'm, I'm one of those people would say you're hard on your dogs, you know which I was, but, but when you're first starting out, you don't have all those options where you can say, yeah, I check everything on my yard. That comes later because there, there's going to be one or two or a few or whatever it is where, you know, it's going to be like that where, where, you know, uh, parents weren't done nothing with the grandparents were great time all the way back was, but then parents weren't and if you're starting out and that's the only dog you can get or one of the few options of dogs that you can get that's how you would go about it get them do what you need to do with them pups just don't repeat that scenario again because you don't have to after you start breeding your own dogs you don't have to do that too often you know if at all you know there, there's some exceptions you know and i was a hard ass but but you know i understand that there's exceptions to the rules and and depending on how you go about it you can you can eliminate the negatives or the unknowns you know by doing just that you could you could make sure that everything in front of that is worked is checked and and uh, you don't repeat that same scenario over and over again unless there's a just another exception like maybe it's the only female in the litter and i've told people this it sometimes it it sounds kind of funky but let's say you have a female like that you know she's the only one in the litter you can't replace her last of the line this and that don't do nothing with her don't look at her don't do nothing don't find out if she's game cold nothing just breed her and see what you get out of it because you can't replace her you want to you want that particular blood in your dogs so my advice is just just go on her breeding performance not on herself because you might be sorely disappointed and then you would have lost uh, her and her blood and uh, you can fix it, so to speak. You know, there's going to be that unknown with her, but as you move down the line, checking everything, that unknown kind of, it goes away. Those are, those are exceptions, rare exceptions. Don't repeat it. I wouldn't advise people to do it, but you know, Sometimes you don't have a lot of options. Excellent. Excellent. I was just about to uh, ask you that uh, that last part, but you added it in. I was going to say, what if there's a situation where you have a it's one puppy, one surviving puppy from the litter. The, uh, the father <clears throat> is still producing, but the mother doesn't exist no more. The mother's gone or whatever. So that breeding can't be duplicated. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Would, that would, you, that... Yeah. Go ahead. That would be that that scenario right there. Yeah. I would, if it was me, I would keep her, raise her up, breed her. I wouldn't look at her, touch her, face her off, nothing, and just breed her and see how she throws. Don't mm -hmm. don't 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 tell people or act like she's game or she's this or that. Just be honest. Right. And she's the she's the exception to the rule. You can't replace her. 
her mom is not around no more or can't produce no more. She's the only one left, you know. Uh, e even with all my experience, if that scenario had ever popped up later on, I probably would have done that. But I wouldn't lie about it either. I tell people I never touched her. I never did nothing with her. I just breed her. I just bred her to some good males and went from there. Yes, sir. As far, as far as she goes, I don't know. I don't know shit about her. But she throws good dogs. So, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that's that's the thing, though. Don't repeat that over and over because you'll get yourself in a rut. Now you just make excuses for all your dogs that quit or all your dogs that won't start or whatever. And then they, you're going to have a lot of trouble after that. Right. right. So just just recognize it as a rare exception and, and move forward. Yes, sir. Um, Brother Boone, Rasta Man, what's yeah. your take on this? Uh, this question here, uh, uh, Robert Tucker says. Um, you know, uh, which basically <clears throat> is it okay to breed to a dog uh, that parents weren't checked, but it's grandparents and great grandparents, and down the line were bulldogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, like um, I might be a little different than um, uh, you know, some folks. Uh, I remember when uh. Uh, one of my first dogs uh, came from uh, one of them, uh, uh, a guy named Jerry Short. It's a guy on this end. Uh, and we really didn't know much about the dogs, but, you know, uh, a friend of mine that lived over there in the neighborhood I stayed in, he was like, man, I know a guy got some dogs. I said, shit, let's go down there. And uh, seeing the little Dalmatian looking dog with the little old block head, I just like, oh, I like old block head looking dog anyway. And uh, and I said, well, what you take for her? He said, give me a hundred dollars. I said, well, shit, I, I'll take her. And, uh, you know, uh, well, we, we got the plan around with her and man, she turned out to be a real good dog. And uh, uh, we bred her to a Zebo mill, a, a big Zebo mill. And we got a couple puppies out of that. They, they turned out good. And, um, you know, but who knew that uh, this dog that we got from this guy, which I really didn't know a lot about, uh, that, that she would turn out to be a, a, a good enough dog to, to be bred, you know? So yeah, it's 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 possible you can do those things, man. Because you know, I just really believe if, if, if when you breed bulldogs, it could be a a, a dog done quit and uh, an adult dog that doesn't won, and hell, they will throw something that'll go like a bird saw. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just, I just think when you breed dogs, now we know what we prefer, you know, but. Some people uh, ain't ain't that uh, blessed to be able to have those options, like what's been said by the panel. So yeah, it, it can be done. Yes, sir, uh, brother Eli, what's your take? Uh, yeah, most definitely it can be done, man. Uh, like the like the brothers were saying, I'll add. I I knew of a wrong bitch that comes from a very, very uh, reputable kennel that the guy told me out his own mouth. I never touched her, never did anything to her. I just selected good good breedings and he told me his process for selection. And when he told me the process for selection, it made sense to me why he did what he did. And I was like, damn, oh, that made sense. And he produced, he made her wrong. You know, but it was the exception and it was something that he knew the grandparents and the same the, the same thing we said earlier when we were talking about uh, 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 the, the scatterbred breeding and knowing the gene pool and, and, and establishing the gene pool. He already knew the grandparents and the history of those dogs and what had been established in those dogs. So when he seen it, he knew what direct not what direction to take it. And when he had talked to uh, uh, the people that had those dogs before him, he got the information that he needs. So it's, it comes to what you know about these dogs 
and your selection, but make your best selection and make your choice and be able to live with it. I myself, I had a buddy. He got a dog from a from a very good old time uh, old timer, and he thought to himself, he's like, man, I gotta breed him. I gotta breed him. When he bred him, he was iffy on his choice because everybody, like Schoolboy alluded to earlier, everybody had that high, super high standard that they would never do this. They would never do that, and they talked so bad about it. To he one day he he saw a look and he just felt like oh man I don't know man he got rid of his dog and when he got rid of his dog when he raised the puppies off of it he got some exceptional pretty good damn dogs off of it and he felt like shit that he had gave away what probably was his golden ticket he had pretty much let it go because he would he couldn't live with his own choice so be able to live with your own choices and see him through and like brother Russell said keep everything that way you know exactly what you got. Because if you give it away, you'll get some people that will look at the pedigree and, oh, man, it's a great pedigree. And they're going to do exactly what you did, not for the reason that you did, but they're going to do it to sell a few puppies or just because, hey, they ain't got the room. So they got to get rid of and you'll never know. And your dogs will start to get that bad name because they go into bad hands. Each one of these situations lead to another and it trickle down. Keep it, live with it, and and, and, and move on. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, welcome down, man. Big stepping, man. Uh, um, what's your take on that? Now, see, I'm one of them high standard, only breed the winner type guys. You feel me? And you know that's just my standard. How I came up in the game, and if I was still, you know, fucking around, I would only breed. You know, a winning male to a bitch that ain't one shit or vice versa. But ideally, I like them both to be winners, awful winners. And I say all that to say this. I've missed out on a lot of good fucking breedings being like that because I didn't want to fuck with shit that was like that. And my homies end up breeding it and the bitch produced pretty damn good and shit, you know. So it does happen and it can work. But only do it like. OG uh, Garcia was saying as a like a one time get out of jail free card, you know, like these your first dogs you only got. You really enthused about them and all that shit. You know, it's only a one shot, you know, deal. Don't always be like that because you can just start breeding fucking cur after cur after cur. You know, the cur shit start popping up on you when you stop looking. But yeah, you can do it, man. I mean, be successful. Me personally, I never did it and probably never would. But like I said, I missed out on a lot of good shit by being like that. But you no know, old dog stuck in his chain type shit. <laughs> I know a dog right now. And all of y'all on this panel know the dog. I'm not going to say the dog name. But I know for a fact uh, that this dog ain't never been looked at. You know, this dog was a shy dog. And it was bred to perfection. Beautiful pedigree. And the brooder just bred the dog. And the next thing you know, the first time he bred it, the dog produced produced a couple of champions and a couple uh winners off of it that breeding. And ever since then, the dog been producing. It's a fucking rom dog now. And they never even looked at that motherfucker. And, and it's a, according to what they told me, you yell too loud, that dog quiver up and, you know, and, Running and hiding on the yard and shit, running in his doghouse, but the motherfucker was throwing. And it'd be weird shit like that sometimes. But like I said, I'm not gonna say no names, but so when people say shit like, oh no, I would never this, well, I bet you that dog is in your dog pedigree. You know what I'm saying? If you fuck with certain bloodlines, I bet yeah. you that dog is in that pedigree, you know? Yeah. Well, Let me add something know, to that. that. Me... Oh, go ahead, my bad, OG. I was going to add something to that because, you know, as you move forward, here, here's the one caveat to it. Like you were saying that dog, uh, seven, eight, you know, uh, you know, as long as they don't lie and say he done this and that, you know, right. That's, that's fine. But what happens, those negative behaviors, they come out too. Right. 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 So, so you, you have that potential of throwing real good dogs but then though that that negative stuff it's going to come out also so you're going to have to deal with that and, and then it gets to well how many of them shy squirrely funky acting scaredy 
dogs you're going to put up with. And that, mm-hmm. that's what I'm warning against, you know. Right. If you keep repeating it, that, that trait's going to come out. Because the bad ones, they always come out a lot easier than the good ones. And, and they're harder to get rid of. But you- so, so in one, maybe two generations, you, you might have a slew of dogs that are good. But that crap is going to come out, too. That's Absolutely. one of the reasons why, why Ram is saying what he's saying. Because, right. you know, if you check them, if you they're solid and their temperament, behavior, everything about them, there's more pluses than minuses. Then you have less chance of having those negative traits come out. But if you don't, that negative shit is going to start coming out more and more and more. And I guarantee you that they ain't going to throw like the like the male that you said wasn't tested. Right. Absolutely. That, that, it's almost like a flute. Right. You know? So right. you got to be careful when you do that. You know, that's yeah. why it's like we talk about cold dogs. You know, they can throw, they can produce great dogs. But like what happened with Danny Burton, he bred a cold bitch. All the males were good. They used them all. They matched them all. Every bitch in that litter was cold. So that's that's what can happen. You know, cold mm-hmm. dogs, they're going to throw, but that cold is going to come out. How, how many are you going to put up with? Right. How, yeah. often, how often are you going to you going to accept it is, OK, well, that's, you know, waiting two or three years. You motherfuckers won't turn on this and that. What are you going to do with them? You, you can't breed them all. <laughs> Waste hey, your fucking time. You know what? You know yeah. what? Hey, salute to my brother, Dr. Hood, in the building. I see you, brother. Salute to Dr. Hood. Yeah, uh, you know what, schoolboy? You know how to get away with it? <clears throat> Let's say I did something like that. Let's say I had a cold dog and or even a fucking cur dog. And I bred to it because it was it was it had an immaculate pedigree. And I bred it, all right? And I kept the puppies for, say, you know, a little while. And I took the good acting puppies and I gifted schoolboy a puppy. I gifted uh, um, uh, Roster Man a puppy. I gifted Eli. I gifted Ram. I gifted Bliss a good puppy. And then the puppies that I knew were showing me early on traits that were, eh, you know, I just sold them to the public. I sold them to the guys in the chat who just said, hey, man, you got a good dog. I want a good dog. I sold it to them. Now, if one of those dogs, just one of them, turned out for you guys, you going to vouch for me and say, hey, man, I got a good dog from 78. Woo, off that litter. And that's how they, they fucking get away with that bullshit. That's because, true. Yeah, that's how they get away with it. Yeah, that's they, true. They place, they place dogs in good hands with real dog men, and everybody forgets about the fucking shit that they pass out. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what uh, you know, we were talking about that earlier in my chat. What, what people do, they always tell you about the good. So you made that breeding, you might get one, maybe two, and you got six, it ain't worth the shit. They're going to talk all day long about that one or two. They're right. gonna. It's gonna go down in history. They ain't gonna tell you about the other sh- six that weren't worth it. Yeah, that's what I mean about being honest. You know, be honest. If if they, I've had litters like that, and I got rid of them, and I I got dogs off of them that I competed with, but I wouldn't breed them. And eventually, I got rid of every single one that had any drop of that blood in it. That's okay. That that's how it's done. I had fun playing with them. I won with some of them, lost with some of them, showed good, beat good dog, this and that. But they weren't good enough for breeding. And mm-hmm. like I said, eventually, over time, I just got rid of all of them. But that's mm-hmm. the that's the one problem. They're going to talk all even, – even our own dog. We're going to talk about the good, this and that. But for me, like I talk about keeping records, you know, I kept records of all the ones that quit because I want to know what my percentage are. I want accurate mm-hmm. information. I want accurate stats. And and the only way to do that is you got to talk about the bad as well as the good, you know. But you're right, seven eight. That's what people do, you know. Yeah. Oh, that dog, that dog, good. Mm-hmm. I got a good one for seventy eight. What right. were the litter mates like? They were all shit. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> nah, they ain't gonna tell you that. They gonna say they're all good too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 They all was box quality. They all could have made champion yeah, grand. Yeah, champ. yeah, I yeah, held yeah. them back for breeding. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, yeah, you know something that happened to me. I went one time. I had a brother ask me, "What? How were my dogs?" And I told him, "I said, well, to me, uh, I mean, they pretty average. They they good. They solid. But they they pretty average." 
He said, dude, he said, well, what type of shit are you breeding? Why would you sit up there and say, why would you breed some shit like that that you said? I said, because most dogs to me are average. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he yeah, was upset yeah. by that because I was on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 That's just the way it is. It's always been that way. Just like we said, people don't talk about it. You know, they don't. Hey, they don't. Right. So, some people don't read, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, you're going to get yeah. all kind of shit. You know, yeah. when, when you're dealing with people, man, you know, you you, you, you just going to run into all kind of stuff, man. I mean, you know, it, it might be somebody you think is uh, mentally perfect, stable, perfectly stable. And uh, and after they get to doing some of the dumb shit they do, then you'll be like, damn, man, uh, I thought this guy... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it, you know, dealing with the dogs, man, uh, you know, you just uh, you come in contact with uh, so many different type of people. And uh, so that's the beauty of the game, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not everybody mm-hmm. thinks the same. Not everybody does the same. Right. But, right. but I'll say this. I'll say this. Mm-hmm. If you got your standards, stick to yeah. them. Yeah. For, for how, whatever reason you got, you know, you you yeah. you stick to them. You do it the way you want. And yeah, and if if they're if they're good standards and you have consistency, you're going to improve over time. Yeah. You know. And if you're you don't, better. you're you're going to be like these other guys that you know. Well, you know, this might work and that work, and I hope it works. And you know. 30 fucking years you're breeding, breeding dog, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, that never made sense to me. So a lot mm-hmm. of them old timers, when they used to tell me stuff, I didn't, you know, I didn't argue with them, but I, I didn't do what they said either because it, it, it didn't make <laughs> sense. <you know? laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't, okay. just okay. nod my head and say, yeah, you know. Yep. Salute just, to the brother. Uh, uh, go ahead, single boy, you say something? I was just gonna say, just just make your own standards, stick to them, and you'll have success when you, when you get consistency. That's what you're looking for. You want to start off with average, and and it's like Frank Rocca, me and him used to say, well, what if my average is above average? Right. Now now you now 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 you at a different level. You know exactly. what you what what you call average for me is below average, right. and what I what I call average for you is above average. Exactly. And it's just the, the, the quality of the dogs and the consistency of them. You know, and and uh, you know we were talking about traits last week or or something about the, I forgot. You know, style. <laughs> that's what it was. And when people ask me, oh, well, what you like, generally I say, you know, I like dogs that scream in the corner, scratch hard, don't hesitate, stay in hold, always busy, always doing something. I don't like stupid dogs. It ain't so much you know I want a shoulder dog or a face dog or anything like that. But those are the traits, speed and power, stuff like that, that, that I tried to keep in my dogs. The ones that didn't have that, I didn't use them. I didn't keep them. If they scratch slow, I might use them, compete with them, but I ain't going to breed them. You know, if they squirrely or funky acting or the bitches ain't good mothers, you know, it, all this. You make your own rules for your dogs and then stick to them as much as you can. You're going to have exceptions like we just talked about, but over time, you're going to see that consistency. You're going to, you know, don't accept subpar shit or just something negative that you say, ah, oh, well, you know, he's good at all this, but he got, you know, motherfucker scratches slow. Don't, don't, don't accept it because you'll start get a bunch of slow scratching dogs. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And, and, and see what happened. This is what happened. This, and, you know, I just want to say this is you will say, instead of the 10 count, we need a 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now you're changing the whole game just to suit your blood, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Salute to yeah. the brother Roscoe Grant. Uh, Little Rock in the building. Appreciate the love, family. He says, What's up, Little Rock? He says, Have you ever seen a dog quit in someone's hands and then in uh, the hands of someone else uh, go out game? Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Garcia. Um, I've heard of them. I've seen dogs that, that quit and then won. I would I would say because they were in good condition, they would give you the 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 
you would have that concept that they're they're relatively game, but mostly it's because they're they're in real good condition. You know, I, I I've heard of people saying dogs, you know, dead game after he quit this and that. It depends on the circumstances. Mm-hmm. When, when, when something like that happens, it's usually because the dog was real young and it stopped when it was young, you know, mm-hmm. but a full grown dog that, that, that was competed with, he's mature and he quit. I've seen him go a- and win again, but I wouldn't say they were dead game or very game at all. It's just, they had a lot of ability. You know, I had a dog like that. I called him after he lost, he lost in two hours and eight minutes. He was an athlete, took punishment. Well, he could bite rugged he had over in roles and and matches he had over 10 and a half hours on him when he was three and a half years old just a durable dog but he quit i got rid of him but a dog like that somebody could have took him or i could have took him again and won with depending on just because of his ability but you know i've heard dead game dogs after they quit and this and that you know rascal would be another one he quit when he was 16 months old you know that's immaturity i would say just depends. He went over two hours after that. You know, I don't know the circumstances of his wins, but, you know, uh, once, once a dog quits or learned to quit or had that quit in him, it, it's real hard to, to have him come back after that. I'm not saying it don't happen. It hasn't happened, but I ain't really seen it. Win, yes. Dead game, no. I haven't seen that. Maybe somebody else has. Rusty Man, have you seen it, brother? Um, a dog quit and come back and win. <clears throat> we'll, come, we'll come back and uh, and die a game. Um, uh, no, not 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 that I know. Uh, I, I've had an experience where we had one that we seen losing, and we just said, you know, let's come back and and uh, you know pick up and let's come back and we'll get them. And so we did that, you know, but uh, not quit and then come back dead game. No, I, I haven't seen that yet. And I'm sure it's possible because I'm telling you, the Bulldogs are very, very unpredictable. You can be thinking you got it all figured out, man, and sometimes they'll do some shit you ain't never seen, like uh, old Bronson, grand champion Bronson. Hell, he was getting his ass ate up until I came in there and, then he killed the dog. So, I, I mean, you know, it's, the dogs are funny, man. It just depends on, you know. And then another thing that I really find that's uh, important with the dogs is what kind of relationship you have with the dog. That's very important, man. If you got that relationship with that dog, whereas he trusts you, you know, like, you know, the, his caretaker or whatever the case may be, uh, that that joker would go a long ways for you, you know? But, um, yeah, that's... That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's true. true. You know, that Mr. Rowdy dog that I talk about, my, my wife bottle mm-hmm. fed him, hand raised him, you know? His first match, my partner did him, and he, he kind of messed up on the keep. Anyway, he was losing. He was losing to a Nigarino dog from Chainsaw, and he was getting his ass handed to him. Right. And and my buddy's in there talking to him. He's standing there. He's acting game. He ain't going to quit. But when I come out of the house and she looked down, saw he was getting beaten. She said, hey, Rowdy, what are you doing, man? What, you know, get, get in there, man. His tail came up. He started wagging it 100 miles an hour. He turned it around. Everybody's telling my wife, talk to him, man. She talked to him. He's listening to you. So she brought him out of that slump and he was just listening to his mama. You know, yeah, that's, that's what I'm that's talking about, mama. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> she heard him. She okay, okay, mama. I'll, I'll get him. I'll get him. You know, like that. It's, it's, it's so the yeah, that change. the yeah. stakes yeah. changed when he heard right. our boy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and like like Boone said, that bond it it, it matters. It can make yeah. a difference. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that ain't, ain't nobody taking the L in front of their mama. We don't exactly. fight. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. You can have a straight old school kung fu death match. Yeah. 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 You got that right, man. Hey, you yeah, know what? Love is real. You know? Hey, hey look here, man. Yeah. I wish it was some kind of way we could do a movie because, man. 
you know, brother Ram, all y'all brothers, man. Hey, y'all hey, just, me, hey Ram, we'll talk to you about me and Ram working on something. Yeah, yep. hey, hey, we need to do it, man. We need to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fire too. It'd be some good stuff, man. It'd be some good. Stuff. <laughs> Hey, Arrowhead Kenner, Kendall said, uh, salute to the schoolboy in Boone. He said, uh, Mr. Joe Woodall said, what's up? And a good show, and he listening. Hey, tell right, salute. Joe Woodall, what's happening, bro? We got family love for all the massive brothers out there. Family love, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. Salute, yeah. Joe. He's got, he's been a dog man for many, many years. He's got some good dogs. Weird Jack is probably his most famous, but he's got He's had over the years a lot of them, you know. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's got bad good, ass, Jeep, Jeep crosses with the good yeah, rap rap, boy in there. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. Ty, Ty Green in the super chat. Appreciate the love, family. He got two super chats, uh, two questions. He says, "Can a ten-year-old stud still throw good dogs? And how many pups, on average, do ten-year-olds throw?" We talked about this, I believe, last week or the week before. But yeah. bro, yeah, last it's, ten, week. it's yeah. ten year old dogs that can bro look, grand champion hogs father, war pony is still out here for stud open for stud for like two G's, man. Throwing pipe, laying pipe to all you bitches. You know what I'm saying? And that motherfucker gotta be, I don't know how old he is, 13, 14 or some shit. He, he, I yeah. think he is. Yeah. He's laying pipe. Yeah. Yeah. I had Go ahead, go ahead. Health and virility and, and you know, uh, uh, what kind of condition they're in, you know, that all, that all, you know, Big Red, he threw pups till he was 15 years old, good ones. And and he was always in good shape, always exercised, always fed right. I even, I even used to roll him on, on his sons when he was eight, nine years old, you know, just to, to start them up or to, you know, he, mm -hmm. he was bigger and broken teeth. But he would get in their shit right away. They knew they were they were in it. You know, it was no fucking around. So he mm. was good for that. You know, and he would just just that health matters a lot. You know, health and virility and and just good exercise, good food, and you can get a lot more years out of them than something that ain't taken very well. Yeah. Taken care yeah. of very well. My pup uh, that I registered with you, his dad is thirteen. You know, and his litter had like five or six of them in it. I ain't seen them last weekend, and I ain't even recognize them because I ain't seen them in yeah. a couple years. Like that motherfucker looked like how he looked the last time I seen him. You know, yeah, yeah, that motherfucker yeah. looked like a seven, eight year yeah. old dog. But my partner yeah. take real good care of him and shit. So, yeah, you know, yeah. There's there's a picture. You know, it's in my on my International Coalition Dog Registry logo, and and it's probably Big Red's most famous picture. He's 13 years old in that picture. He don't have one gray hair. Nothing. He looks like a young dog. He looks like a five year old. But that yeah, again, that's just you know taking care of him, exercise, mm -hmm. good food. That's why that's good aftercare is important too, though. Exactly. That aftercare, yeah. how, yep. you know, when you get good at it, you can make your shit to the untrained guy look like he never had a tooth in him. You know. Yep. 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 From the fur growing back to no scars, none of that. Like damn. Yeah. You can't tell this motherfucker got 10 hours on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, salute to Bulldog Kid in the Super Chat. Appreciate the love. Hey, I, uh, before I read his Super Chat, listen, y'all, it's very important that y'all go back and watch all of the shows we do, man, and um, really listen to the shows because we have different questions within the show. The title might say one thing, but with it, that's just the title is just one question within the show. So we might have 10 different questions, 20 different questions, whatever. Go back and watch those shows and really listen because we get a lot of repeat questions. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. But I just want to let y'all know uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of jewels y'all probably missing out on. Bulldog Kid says, when do you know your dog is at their peak when conditioning? Uh, he says, <clears throat> and uh, Boone, can you speak on the uh, gas and buck dogs from the Carolinas, uh, brother Boom. Um, the <clears throat> I met Gaston some years ago, and uh, uh, yeah, some good. They what Yellow John Jocko bred cross dogs, 
and I think uh, the Buck uh, stuff uh, is, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's Bolio, Balls, or it's Cross, I think. If the, if the boating. If the boat, if the boating stuff with the Tonka and book uh, and, and, and book stuff in it on the book side, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have any yellow John in it? Uh, yeah, they got uh, he he got some yellow John crosses. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah. Yellow, well let's say Jocko, mm -hmm. <laughs> yellow John yeah, Jocko. Yeah. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. yeah. So, but uh, there have been some good dogs that uh that's come off that stuff, and uh, you know. Uh, there's, you know, there's been a lot of good dogs in the Carolinas off that stuff and in other places. It's not just here, but um, yeah, uh, they they they've they've done well with him. Matter of fact, I liked it, old Gaskin. I thought he was a pretty good guy. He was just a little weird. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't weird. You know, maybe I just didn't know enough about him. But right. He, he had some good dogs. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, salute to everybody in the building. I see you hams in the line here. Salute, family. All right, let's get to some of these questions. Um, let me see here. Let me try to find where we were at because the brother uh, sent a super chat. Um, hey, can I ask his question on that it, peak, on that peak uh, condition? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, brother. Well, when I usually know that my animal is at that peak is when I can see their recovery. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to end up doing a uh, uh, little episode with 7-8 on. But when when you're conditioning, a lot of people, I, I like to refer to Robert Lim when, when he talked about his condition, a lot of people didn't get it where he was pulling this animal off and when he was looking at the recovery time. But you can start to push that window of when they hit a heat wall and and recover and that lactic acid build up. You can watch that by the way that dog is working when they start to fall off and kind of walking them out and keeping them recovering and letting them, and letting them cool on their feet and bringing them back and see that time go out. But when you see that time start to get out as your, as your weeks go by and your conditioning and that recovery time starts to lessen. Like for me, when my, when my animals start to hit the heat wall way later on in the conditioning or if they even hit one when they start to look like, damn, they never hit a heat wall or I see a slight one and they recover real fast on their feet or I get that. I start to clock. Most times when I start my feed, I'm feeding so good at a, at a, at a cellular level. I start out my dogs five to six minutes. I'll be recovering. And that's rough. Sometimes if they don't have good natural air, eight minutes it'll be real rough you know i'm walking them out and they they not recovering real good but when we get towards the end of that and we start to taper off that work one minute to two minutes they mouth is shut if you even see it you'll be like damn did this motherfucker run hot did he warm up at all and then you start to know as a, that conditioning to handling part you start to know when to look when to when to understand by knowing your animal. That's why I'm not one of those people that I ever leave my animal on a, on a meal by themselves and walk away because I need to see that. I need to know that. I need to know what's going on with you in conditioning when you are going to at most times hit that type of wall. I'm turning it up on you for a reason, for a purpose, turning the intensity all up and then I'm pacing you back down and making you recover on your feet so you know this is how I recover. And that animal a lot of times like that's the difference in tools when you're conditioning to know that recovery time, whether you use a slap mill or an email or a carpet mill, you know, knowing your tools and knowing your animal, what type of animal they are. Some of them are going to burn themselves out on an email. You'll never be able to use an email with them because they're going to burn their pads up. They're going to overrun it. And it's, 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 you're not going to be able to have that, have that type of control. You're going to have to take them off the slap mill and walk them to a cool, you know, knowing that aspect of conditioning is how you get to peak shape. It's how you get to peak shape that'll let you know when you're in peak shape. And when you see that recovery time start to dwindle and you see them heat walls start to move further further out, if you even start to really see them, you'll know when you're in peak condition. And that, 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 let me elaborate on, on, on that. Um, the main thing <laughs> as, as Brother <laughs> Eli was saying, is being able to look at them and understand what they were when you started 
and what you want it to be when you finish. And it don't need to be that in the end. It need to be that in the process of it. So that means after a few weeks of doing what you're doing, you need to start seeing him recuperate, recover, and all this at the you know after a, a, you know a few weeks. You know what I mean? You need to see this because to me, you don't need to get there trying to figure out if he's there. You need to know through the process he there. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but yes, sir. Uh, yep, sure that's, does. <laughs> that's the way I've always looked at it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And another question we got, <clears throat> and y'all listen in the chat, don't pay attention to the views. YouTube is for like the last week, they've been doing some weird manipulation of video views. So when the video views drop down to like one person watching, don't pay no attention to that. There's just that's what they do with politics, man. All right, so look. <clears throat> Um, question I got for you. I'm gonna start with Mr. Garcia. How was Little Gator as a producer, and who was the best producer served by Little Gator? Yeah, that uh, somebody. Uh, in fact, it was uh, you know Rancherita Kennels was uh, Jerry Wiseman. His son and daughter are still around. They still have dogs, and somebody asked them, and he asked me, you know, to put it on here. So. Uh, Probably two of the most. He he was a very good producer, from from what I've been told and following the dogs off of him. Probably two of the best dogs off of him were Angel and Black Angel, both of them four time winners. And uh, Angel was going. It's funny because because uh, back in the day, Angel was going for his fifth into Pit Town, and something happened. Somebody didn't put up the money. I was a stakeholder, and they were going to do it at my house. I don't know what dog they were bringing, but but uh, Danny Burton was going to be conditioning Angel. I think it was Danny Burton because he had done him before. And uh, one side of the I forget what happened, but the money wasn't put up. The show never came off. But, you know, he, he was a very good dog. My buddy said he's probably the hardest biting dog he ever seen. And I asked him why. He said, Richard, he just wrecked shit. You know, he would just he beat a champion dog. One of his wins when Danny Burton had him conditioned him. Black Angel was a hard mouth dog. There's a uh, uh, Cuervo. It's funny you have that picture around because uh, from what I'm told, Cuervo was probably the best producer off of Little Gator. And and uh, um, probably one of the best dogs I seen was bred down off of that stuff. It was a dog named Champion Chamuco. He's as good as I've seen. He was a Champion four-time winner. His first three wins were all of them were under 30 minutes. He beat my buddy OTK in 28 minutes. Uh, he kind of, at, at that point he said, "Well, at least I went the longest with Chamuco than anybody else." That was his claim to fame with Chamuco, you know. Right. And he just he was a type wherever he touched you, and he made it look easy. He bled you, muzzle mm. stifled. He just opened you up. Mm. And and uh, a lot of dogs, you know, they can't they can't deal with that. But what impressed me about him was, that, you know, we talk about gameness, we talk about gameness, this and that. With dogs like him, a lot of times you don't get to see it. But his fourth match, he he wasn't he wasn't in perfect condition. That uh, also his opponent was real smart, muzzle dog, head dog, real slick. And it took an hour for Chamuka got to him. Once he did, he stopped him in hour seventeen. But you got to see a lot of heart. He just never quit, never gave up. He was slipping, sliding, just pushing forward, doing everything he could to get to that dog. And that dog was just so fast and slick that it took him a long time to get there. So those those two reasons are why I consider him one of the best. He was off of a red boy male named Bean. And he actually came down from a, a little female that I sent to Jerry Wiseman, which he bred to, to Gator. And his bottom side was dogs down down off of that. When I seen his third match, Harriet, Jerry's daughter, come up to me with the pedigree just to show me, hey, Richard, you know, this this dog came off of your Bugsy, you know. And I said, well, good. You know, let's see how he does. Man, he was devastated. Just a, just a killer. But I've heard that Cuervo was probably the best producer off of him. It was a, a, a litter was good, you know, that, that uh, 
there was Negrita was a two time winner. Uh, I forget if she was from the Angel or the Black Angel breeding, but there was several dogs. Chido was a two hour winner. Several dogs off a of little gator, and that blood's still going today. Vinny has it. You know, it's it's real popular in Baja. They they compete against a lot of dogs. You know, a lot of, a lot of top guys. So. Yes, sir. Yes, it's all sir. Carver. That that Cuervo, I think he's all Carver. The bottom side is Woods, you know, Woods Blood and and Rascal Champion Rascal. Just heavy, heavy Carver Carver with the with the little Gator. Little Gator is you know he's Spike and, and a lot more Carver stuff. You know, Grand Champion Spike and stuff. So yeah, is is it is it possible? I mean, I'm sure it's, I know somebody got it, but <clears throat> is it possible to find today? Some real, uh, per, yeah, know, yeah, predominant. yeah. If you if you could get a hold of Guy Wiseman, you know, or BMW, you know, BMW mm-hmm. used a lot of that stuff. They're, they're old old dog guys, you know, uh, Eddie and Lionel and a couple of other guys. Uh, right. They're the ones who really, really made a lot of them dogs famous, you know, uh, and of course Benny too. But yeah. Vince might have some, you know, BMW might have some. They're, it's still out there. I know they, they 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 offer them to the public sometimes, you know. Yes, sir. Ram, let me ask you a question. Have, uh, uh, have you ever had a litter where one pup killed its litter mates? Yeah. I had a couple litters that would... Motherfuckers just crank on just way too early and you wake up and be one in there, you know, stretched out toward the pieces. That shit happens sometimes, you know. When they start getting rowdy like that, you got to just start separating them. Just start off by putting the ones who get along together and the ones who don't, you know, isolate them. And eventually, you know, they all going to be completely separated. But yeah, that shit happens, man. It, I mean... You have a yard accident and you're not there. You're gonna lose a dog. <laughs> let, let me ask you this, Ram. Uh, what's your when, when you wake up in the morning and you see you go check your puppies to feed them or whatever, and you see two of them is dead and one puppy is standing over the other one shaking the shit out of them. What's your what's your reaction to that? Oh, he coming right in the house. He my new favorite. <laughs> okay. I, now, now, the reason I ask, now the reason I ask you that is because. <clears throat> A person that's breeding dogs for money will be mad. They'll be pissed off because because they they look at it as this dog just cost me you know x amount of dollars. You know you piece of yeah, shit. I was even you know? thinking about that. You right, know? exactly. I'm exactly. known for keeping them all in the ones I can't keep. I'm giving them the capable motherfuckers. You know, right, who gonna right. do the right thing by them? They ain't gonna press them too young, but they gonna press them. You know. I'll yeah, put them in their hands you know, and keep the majority. But no, I wasn't even thinking along the lines of money gone, shit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know what the fuck is fall back. <laughs> yes, sir. I already know. I already know. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Rasta Man Boone, have you ever had a situation where you had a uh, uh, a, a litter of pups where one one dog killed uh, his litter mates? Uh, one night when I was uh, working Lady Stone, and uh, we was getting ready for blinding, and we come off our height, you know, I, I would go like, uh, let's say about eight to ten miles around, you know, all the way around my neighborhood, and come back, and um, I heard the puppies eating, but I done fed everybody up and everything. And so the, I looked in the pen, and um, they had one stressed out eating the puppy. God damn! You know, I said, "Well, I'll be damned." And so uh, I got so the, the puppy uh, out of there. So you said that it's litter mates was eating them? Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, that was the the Nimrod <clears throat> uh, drill bit in the busy. All them that litter, all them them all them dogs was hot. You know? When they were young, when they were like what, two and a half months old, that's when that happened. You know, they were about, I say, about 
two two months. You know, it was in the winter time. It was cold. You know, it was cold. So I, you know, instead of separating them, I said, "Well, let them stay together because it's it's cold." Shit, come back, fucking puppy with this. So I had to separate them because you know, once they they got that taste, of it, boy, they were scrapping real hard. Then, yeah. but yeah, it has happened, and and that's the thing, man, is being able to <clears throat> depends on your situation. Like, you know, here, it, it, it you know, when it's cold. And you you know you got puppies by themselves. It could be hard on them, but um, you know in the winter you try to you know try to let them stay together as long as you can, so they can have that that heat. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, you can move on. Man. Absolutely, um, Eli, brother Eli, you ever had that situation? Yeah, my first. Ever breeding that I did my, my first breeding that I ever did uh, uh, before game dogs. Uh, I had they were they had game dogs in them, but they were newspaper dogs. That's what I call them. Local shit that that that, that that's around the way from our backyard, right, and stuff, right. you know. And I had these dogs. They was all mixed up with blue game dogs, uh, red nose. But I had one in there. He was my buddy for a long time. I had him for. 14, 15 years. And I had him from the time I was a teenager till I bought my first house. And uh, uh, and it was crazy. My buddy came over and he looked like a big fucking bear. He was the most healthiest fucking puppy. And like the whole litter, they just was, looked, looked like little bears. And they was all fucking crazy as shit. And it was one in their name, Madam. And his name was Mac. And Madam was a crazy ass little bitch. She was the smallest one, but she was crazy as shit. And before I knew it, me and my buddy was sitting there talking and they was running around playing and Madam went over there and tagged Mac ass. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And before I knew it, Mac tagged her and it, it was like this little motherfucker hit a bleeder at, at like eight weeks old, eight, eight, eight to ten weeks old. And that shit started shooting everywhere. And I was like, oh, fuck, what the hell is going on? My buddy was like, bruh, what the fuck did you breed? What the fuck did you do? What did you put together in this? All these little motherfuckers just started rocking and rocking and rolling. I had to peel that little motherfucker off his sister. And it, it was like, God damn. But that was a scatterbred, non-paper dog that shit in that litter. That that little they were they were just on fucking fire, but yeah, it happens. Yes, indeed, Mr. Garcia, what's your take on it? Yep, just about what everybody else said. It it happens. They get they get pumped up for whatever reason, and they'll they'll kill their litter mates, and some will eat them too. Yeah, it happens. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Let me see here. Another question we got here is um, how could we answer that question? All right. Best dog bred, uh, bred to well, the best dog breed to have uh, in survival situations. I guess he's this guy is asking a question. He asked a lot of different questions, but most of them we answered. So I chose this one. He said the best dog breed to have in survival situations um, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be American people will tear. Let me stop you off with that round. Shit, I'm still taking the goddamn bulldog with me. <laughs> motherfucking dog could do everything, man. Trust me. Like, I'm a real dog guy. Like, I really train dogs and all that good old fun shit. Pit bull do the same shit. But like the old school OG said, motherfucker, turn around and whoop your dog ass who bred to do that after he out doing. So I'm going to take that, you know. Coyotes run up. I know he's going to fucking put one down. And we're going to have Coyote for dinner. You feel me? Motherfucker, stranger danger lurking in the bushes. He's going to bark at least and let me know. You know, get up, get the heat. The zombie apocalypse coming. He's going to still let me know. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever situation you put the bulldog in, he with it. He's going to fucking perform to his fullest. <laughs> Uh, like I said before, you see, you could be homeless and the motherfucker still be right by the basket with you, holding it down. <laughs> the pit bull. That's what I'm yeah. taking. 
I ain't mad at you, brother. Um, <laughs> what about you, schoolboy? Same thing. You know, the the an example would be my, my son. You know, he ra- his first dog was Bill, and he ended up being a champion. We spent all kinds of time with him. He would go out at night. We, we lived out in the country, so he'd be out there at night. And we're Mexican, so we always got a knife with us, you know. For some, that's part of our culture. We just carry a knife, you know, all the time. So he's out with Bill, and some coyotes attacked him. And he said, "Dad, I couldn't see, but I pulled out my knife. They started attacking us. Bill got one. He killed that one. Go after another. One. These coyotes, were, you know, they they go in and out, you know. Attack. He said I was stabbing them, this and that. He said I couldn't even see. I was just hitting the dog. I knew Bill was on my left side, and I was on the right side." And we just went at them, run them off, killed a couple of them, you know. But in, in a survival, in that sense, that's what I. That's why I would have a bulldog. Because any other dog, you might not know, they might not do that. You know what I mean? They might. They might. The the bulldog's gonna attack them, and they don't care if it's a coyote, wolf, bear, Godzilla, whatever. Right. They're gonna attack first and ask questions later. So survival, where your life is on the line. It, it always be a bulldog, you know, and it don't matter if it's a 35 pounder or 40. They're going to stay there. They're going to defend you. They're going to defend their cell. They're going to do whatever they need to do. And it don't matter what's in front. And I was just happy that he was out there at night that time with his dog, which he very, very rarely went anywhere without his dog, you know, and uh, he came back and, you know, he was all ruffled up. What happened? He told me the story. And uh, that's why the dog made champion. He just had that bond with that kid. You know, he helped me condition him and all that stuff. So he was a he was a good all around dog that way. But survival, survival, always a bulldog. Yes, sir. What's your take on that, brother Eli? Um, I I got three. My bulldog number one, the dog, the little pup that I talked about, Mac. He was that for me. It, it, that was my buddy and when I say I raised him from a pup and the same way if y'all go on my page y'all see this little pup that I, he he here now but he's the only male that I had the only uh, uh, bulldog that I have but this dog at, at eight weeks old sit, did everything that I asked him to wheel man or wear a train and he would also protect the hell out of me when I tell him get by my side when I tell him watch my back he was on it he knew it Everything I, I trained him to the three best trained dogs that I ever had. You know, outside of a bulldog like that, I had a uh, uh, outside of a bulldog like that. I love the Malinois and just the intensity, the smartness of them, the athleticism of them, and just you know the overall uh, 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 disposition of them. You know, I, I I love the Malinois and Ram. I talked about the Malinois quite quite often on here too when this question that came up in the past. And one thing I see day to day, I stay in the, I stay in the country. And one thing that I say, see day to day around here, those great parent uh, uh, parentees, people have them everywhere. And when I tell you they do their job, they know who's from that neighborhood, who's from these little county roads and country roads. If you come through there and they don't know you, I'm like, how in the fuck do the kids play every day with these big ass dogs lurking <laughs> and being this fucking vicious like this? But they don't fuck with them kids. They know the fucking neighborhood. But if you come over there, if I come through there and they don't know me, the motherfuckers be on it. Get your ass away from here. So those are my three. Uh, a bulldog, Malinois, and a great uh, uh, Pyrenees. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Rasta Man Boone, I'm going to go to the super chat for you and you can answer that question if you want to as well. My brother, Imperial Flames Kennels came through heavy in that super chat with that Kobe. Rick, bro. 60, yeah, that 60 piece. Salute, salute. <clears throat> he said, uh, salute to the panel. He said, uh, Rasta Man, I'm sorry for your loss, brother. Salute. Uh, Rasta Man. Uh, Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Thank you, uh, brother, Imperial Flame Kennels. And thank you for the the donation to my brother there. Um, yeah, that that was a hurting feeling, bro, when you, you know, you done spent a lot of time trying to uh, 
implement something that you felt could happen. And uh, then it all get washed up by, you know, well, Mother Nature got me. And then, uh, you know, the individual thoughts, you know, got it. And uh, so, yeah, I done got over it, you know, because it's been many years now, you know, the, that uh, the, the flood, when that happened, that's been about 35 years ago. Let's see, 35. Let's see. Yeah, uh, might yeah, I think about thirty five. Might be a little bit more, but anyway, it's been a long time. And uh, then after that, uh, let's see, about I think maybe about eight, maybe ten years after that, that's when um, uh, the dogs got taken. And so, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, man, it's a tough cookie, man. When s certain things happen, and you just you know, you ain't see it coming and didn't even expect it to be that way. But all praise to the most high. I was blessed to be able to still have a family. And uh, and even to this day, I still got the, those family of dogs, you know, but I just got uh, one. But uh, there's a lot of people that, that have them, you know, but appreciate it, brother, for, for your kind words. Really do. Yes, sir. Uh, salute to my brother Imperial Flames. Make sure y'all go sub to him, man. Good channel. Excellent channel. Robert Tucker, back in that super chat. Appreciate the love. He says, what dog would y'all <clears throat> use to be wa a watchdog for your yard that's not dog aggressive? He says, I know Ram says uh, Malamu. He says, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking a Dutch Shepherd. Well, me personally, um, for a, a, a watchdog, man, to me, it depends on what you're doing. Like, if you if you want a dog that's a man stopper, if you want a dog that's going to alert you with, with some trouble coming around, like an alarm clock, or you want a dog that's a man stopper, inside the house, I would say a uh, bull massive inside the house. Uh, outside the house, <clears throat> man, to my, my personal opinion, Rottweiler, bro. The motherfuckers there, look, man, a Rottweiler put the fear of God in me one day. Um, one of my homeboys had a Rottweiler, and um, he told me he was playing with me. He told me to come over. He said, man, come over. I want to show you something, man. Come through. You ain't going to believe this shit. I think he got some girl over there. You know, I think he got some girl over there or something. And he's like, man, just come through the house. Come in. Just the door going to be open. I walk in the house. He played too much. This fucking dog. Had to be about 160 pounds, 150, something like that. Rottweiler, slobbering, foaming. And I, you know what I'm saying? And he lucky because I almost shot the dog. I almost shot him, but he, he came right on time and got his dog. Cause, uh, But I'm telling you, you want to instill the fear, the fear uh, in somebody, a Rottweiler. Ain't nothing like a Rottweiler coming out the shadows on the motherfucker, man. <laughs> when them big motherfuckers there, man, that that that's fucking because you know, see a bulldog. If I know the American people will tell you so much, I I I feel like in my mind, even though it's the best dog to have, I feel like I got a fighting chance with him because I know him. It's kind. That it, it sounds weird, but I feel like I know him. I feel like okay, we got a connection. I got a fighting chance with him. I give him my arm and I'm gonna choke the shit out of him. A fucking Rottweiler, I don't know this dude, man. This dude will kill. This dude going to try to kill you. You know what I mean? I know that probably don't make no sense to y'all. But what, what, what would you say to that, Mr. That make perfect sense. Shit. <laughs> you know what you're doing, <laughs> Bulldog? You handling them shit. You ain't handling no Rottweiler. That's a fucking fighting Debo or Black Fight fan or somebody. <laughs> yeah, that man. That's yeah. Shit dangerous. Yeah. What'd you say, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, when I was young, we had for protection around the house, you know, we had uh, German shepherds, and it was this is way before this is in the '60s, way before they went downhill. There was real German shepherds, you know. My my dad and mom they they liked those dogs. They called them police dogs back then. Other than that, we had uh, Australian shepherds and kelpies for cattle dogs, and those dogs are they're they're good, solid working dogs. They're tough, but they're protective. 
They're protective of their home. They're protective of the space. So if you have them in the back of a pickup or you have them inside a pickup, they ain't let nobody in. They, they just they just that way. They protect the cattle. They work the cattle. They protect the kids. They and they're small dogs. They they about forty pounds. But most people scared of dogs anyways, and they weren't the type to. You, you can kick them, beat them. They they won't back off once they're doing their work. Whether it's working cattle or whether they're protecting their area, their, their owner or whatever it is, they're they're they ain't gonna back down in that sense. You, you can you can beat them, shoot them, kick them, whatever. They can take a kick or get stomped on by a cow or a bull. They're tough. So we all I had we had dogs growing up, all kinds of dogs. But those those were the two that we used specifically for work was the cattle dogs and for protection was the German shepherds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh let's go to Roster Man. What's your take on it? Uh <clears throat> one one thing about a pit bull, you ain't gotta worry about him running from the action. He's gonna run to the action. Uh I, I've, I've always kept German Shepherds as my guard dogs, you know, to watch my dogs and watch my kids and my house. You know what I mean? Right. They pretty much, uh, you ain't got to worry about a German Shepherd freaking out on your kid, you know, but with a pit bull, you got to be careful because, you know, to, something could just spark him and he just get hyped, you know, and, and uh, you know, just have to be careful. And, uh, but, uh, you know, a guard dog is, you know, just around the house, a German Shepherd. But if if, if I wanted something that's going to be maximum speed, that pit bull would probably be the one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, did I go to you, Eli, yet? I, I kind of went over into that the last time when I said the uh, Malinois, the Grand uh, uh, Great Pyrenees, you know. So, I mean, I like Cane Carsos, Press Canarios, and uh, the Boar Boars, the Rottweilers. All of those are good protection dogs. But, yeah, I went into that already. Okay. Hey, I yeah. add on, too, though, for uh, somebody asked in the uh, chat, uh, I think it was Max Cyborg or something like that, uh, have we ever had a, a train? pit bull for a protection dog and i just say the best pit bull ever to do that you can look it up wicked cassie you know come off my shit <laughs> we got her up to fucking shuts in two before we you know passed her off but she got her all the way up to shuts in three that's yeah, the only man. pit bull in history to do that you know <laughs> i was just gonna say man ram like y'all gotta really appreciate the people on this panel and what y'all getting because i talk to ram every day and, and, and didn't realize what dogs Ram then, then went through Ram's hands. Like me and Ram was chopping up the other day about a dog, uh, a well-known dog, and Ram is all in the pedigree and shit in the back. Of the pe he in the pedigree, and I didn't even know that shit. You know what I mean? I got, I got. You know what I'm saying? I, I know these dogs, and I didn't even know Ram, the dude I talked to, was in all in this pedigree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally yeah. bred them dogs. Literally took my male boom and, and my bitch to breed that dog. Then I bred her to some more shit and got a champ off that shit, you know? Yeah, I just man. don't be advertising and bragging, you know? To me, that ain't shit. You're supposed to do that <laughs> if you call yourself being a dog, man. But it just tripped me out, though, to see my shit in the back sometime. Like, damn. It's good to see motherfuckers still got it. Shit. <laughs> That's right. It's, it made you feel good. Hell yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an active grand champion out here. Got Ram shit all through the, that motherfucker. So I was like, damn, okay. I didn't even know that shit. But um, has the panel ever bred multiple males to a bitch in heat? And we talked about this is one of those questions we talked about multiple times. Has the panel ever bred uh, uh, multiple males to a bitch in heat? I hear uh, this happened with Zebo, the Zebo litter. If so, should a dog breeder tell the customer if he did that? I guess, um, brother, Mister Boone, let's, uh, let's. What's your opinion on that? Have you ever? No, um, no. Nah, nah, um, I've never bred several dogs 
uh, in one heat cycle to a female. I've never done that. Um, I'm sure that uh, there's been people that have done a whole lot of different things, but I've never tried that. And uh, the other part of the question is what now? Is um um okay wait a minute I'm sorry I what, would you would you tell would you tell the person if you did right it? right would you tell the yeah exactly okay um, if I was selling the dog and I done bred the dog to three four <laughs> different dogs I I would say look you know um, we we bred this bitch to four different dogs we assume she having four different puppies. <laughs> From East Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one is your dog daddy. <laughs> <laughs> sound, like, you, sound like a lot of people nowadays. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm, hey, that's why I'm saying it like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah real shit. Well, all my hey. kids look like me, though. I can't play that game. Yeah. I can tell in the ultrasound. They all got yeah. my fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 but, you know, you got some house, so it might be six different daddies. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, so it, it could be a lot of different ways, but that, that ain't to say that's a bad thing. It just say, you know, it's it's more family love, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's be. like it's like uh, Daniel Boone. He he was away for a year and a half, right back in the day. Yeah. His wife thought he was dead, right, because he hadn't yeah. returned. Been a year and a half. Well, he comes back. She has a baby, and and she, he asked her, "Well, who's the daddy?" He said, "Your brother." He goes, well, <laughs> he, he goes. So he tells her, he goes, ah, the name's the same. It's all the same. He didn't give a <laughs> uh, Same breeding. Different yeah. males. That's it. Yeah. You're not breeding yeah. uh, Jocko. You're yeah. breeding his brother. Yeah. Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's how it was back. He couldn't, he couldn't be mad at her. He, she thought he was dead, you know. Yeah. And she wasn't, she wasn't going to be alone. And he was his brother. So yeah, it's all in the family. It's okay. You know. <laughs> right, right. He went about them genetics. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your take on that, brother Eli? Uh, my buddy did it. Uh, he had a he had a male that was a good one that that you know he really liked, but he wasn't too sure that he was just gonna produce for him. And then he had another good one that he hadn't bred yet, and he was doing a breeding back to their mama, and he bred both of them. Uh, he bred both of them because we had bred the first male. We had bred to my bitch and we only got two puppies off of him off of him and he had bred him once before and only got one or two puppies off of him so he was like i don't know if it's him or if it's the bitch you know i'm just gonna breed them both and then our dna test you know and he bred he bred them both he ended up only getting like two or three puppies out of it and he kept everything and shit it, it, uh he got down to just one of them and he dna so i mean it is what it is. If you're going to, and to answer the last part of that, if you're going to send it off to somebody, yeah, uh, if you got any integrity in you, you're going to let you, you're going to let them know, hey, look, this is what it is. Uh, we can DNA test or you can accept this is what it is, you know. But I myself personally, it ain't no accepting what it is. It's DNA test if you're going to move forward with it, you know. So we have that ability in this day and age. So, I mean, I don't see no problem with it. If you can knock down two uh, 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 two birds with one stone, but definitely DNA testing and, and, and let it be known. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, welcome down Ram, Big Stepping. I ain't never did it or knew nobody who, you know, did it and admitted it. But if I was, I would do like all the good brothers were saying and get DNA profiles on both the males and the mom. And then once the litter is born and of age to be able to come out, you know, into the world, get they shit DNA profile too. That way you could know for sure. That's the only right way to do that shit. If you is going to take a good shortcut like that and do it, don't just be passing off no shit, roll of the dice, you know, because if you send somebody a good one and he bases yard off of that, you know, you, you fucking them. You fucking up his whole future now because he don't know. You know, he can only breed the traits off his good dog for so many 
fucking generations before it starts to fuck up. But he gonna need that out that go good with the blood. So you're gonna have him wasting time trying to out this way and then have to try another out that way. So just to keep it clean, just get everything DNA profiled if you do do that. Yes, indeed. And I say, uh, we'll go back to what we were talking about. Like, I didn't even know the motherfucker was a grand champ, though. Oh, that shit tripped me out. Like, God damn. Oh, you talking about what was looking at? Yeah, that shit was just cool to yeah, see. I, yeah, because I, I knew about it because <clears throat> where I got my one of my pups from, the breeder, you know, he 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 hooked that up. So he was he was you know telling me about it, and he was you know offering me a pup off of that breeding. So when you said yeah. you told me before that you had a dog in the pedigree, I'm like, no, you had the dog. And then you was like, yeah, I'm like, shit, man, Ram, I had, okay, I didn't even know Ram had was that deep into it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of good dogs that come off of that. Real, it's a lot of good dogs that come off of that. Yeah, yeah, that shit surprised the shit out of me too, though. You feel me? <laughs> That's just mm -hmm. good to see though. My fucking hard work, you know, didn't go to waste. You know, that yeah, was a lot of years. Too. Yeah, that was a lot of years of putting in work. And that's some of that old uh, Vesper shit I was talking about a couple uh, shows back, that old uh, Barney Fight shit. Yeah, yeah. Crossed in with the boils. <laughs> hey, that was some good that's shit, it. bro. That was some good shit right there. That was, At one point in time, that was the bolio shit that I was looking for at one point in time. Yeah, that's some good shit. Yeah, man, you know... And then was, you know, a lot of dogs people never even really heard of, like, so, you know, just putting in the work. And I'm glad, you know, motherfuckers are still continuing it, though, you know. Uh, it suck if you see your shit and then it's just all blank. Ain't nobody did nothing. you like, what the fuck? <laughs> instead of just yeah. fucking called that shit instead of letting it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that old Vesper and Nigel stuff. Yeah. 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 So, Mr. Garcia, what's your take on the uh, the question? Well, now you can the the pros of it is is you get you know you get pups off of two different males, so you have that variety. The cons is you know you you lessen the pups off of each male. I never did it. They they used to do it in the past. It's not really that new. It's just not very popular. And all they had to go on in the past was how the dogs look. <laughs> look like look like one male, you know. It's not really accurate. That's that's flipping at best, but but you know, taking a chance. But now with the DNA profile, you can do it. A lot of people are gonna do it. It's just a little bit more variety, less pups off of either male, but more variety. You know, uh, you have to make the breedings within close proximity to each other. You know, like within the same day or so, or the next day. It can't be like four or five days later, from what I've been told. Anyways, it has to be, you know, it has to be while, while she's ovulating. And uh, uh, but back in the day, it was done. I think Floyd did it, and and uh, a couple of others. And they would just go on how the pups look. You know, they say it looked like this male. That's off of that. This now with DNA profile, you can be sure. And yeah, regard regardless of. What you're breeding, how you're breeding. If you let the dog out of your yard, you should be you should be honest about it. You know, that that's that's something that's that's always been in the dog. I don't agree with it, but people do whatever the hell they want. Anyway. Absolutely. Um, and I got a question here. Um, this question here is: Would the panel buy frozen semen? From a grand champion dog from the 90s with no DNA profile. I just purchased some. I, I just purchased some, but now everyone tells me the ADBA won't register the pups. So let me read that again. Would the panel buy frozen semen from a grand champion dog from the 90s with no DNA profile? I just purchased some, but now everyone tells me the ADBA won't register the pups. Let's start with Brother Eli. <coughs> Sounds like a, well, uh, for me, for guy. me, it would absolutely it would absolutely depend on who it came from and how much knowledge I had of that semen and of that uh, and of that camp or those people 
and it, it dogs around. It. You know, I, I I was offered a a, a semen off of a it was either a brother of a Boudreaux's boss or a, a son a, a son of Maverick a son of boss, and it was from the nineties, and I was like, oh shit! But I I couldn't prove nothing. I just know that it was DNA profile. People that I knew knew this camp, and they were they they were good people. But I just was like, yeah, I don't know. So I kind of just let it go in the wind. It was coming from at a, at a good price, but I know you learn from your experience. I've had some experiences with 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 some old timers, with some dog men. Period. That you set yourself up for failure if you don't know. So the best thing is, man, in this game, what you know, that's what you go with. What you can't prove and what you don't know. Leave it alone, bro. Just walk away from it because reality of it is, is this ain't this ain't the fucking Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. That, everybody ain't gonna be honest with you. Um, Mr. Garcia, what's your take on it? Uh, kind of what Eli said. You know, if it's that far back, there, there's got to be some paper trail on it. Where's it coming from? Who collected it? I don't know what what. Uh, when other facilities started doing it, but back in the day when it was first done, there was only one place that did it. That was in Texas. That's the only place in the United States that did it. And we're talking Grand Champion Badger was done there, collected there, and so was Bad Billy, Champion Bad Billy. It, it depended on the time frame. If it didn't come from that facility, I wouldn't trust it uh, because, you know, they it wasn't. I don't think there was DNA profiling back then. I would just be real leery of it. You know, you would have to know, like Eli said, where it come from, who got it. Do you trust them? How did they, who stored it? Where's it been? And then, you know, uh, you could DNA profile it now, but then what are you, what are you profiling it against? It's just going on somebody's word. If you trust the person. Yeah. If not, I would mess with it. You know, uh, as far as registering the dog, you know, uh, they have their standards. You know, I, I don't DNA profile none of mine. It's too much hassle. If people want to do it. They can do it. I, it's not a requirement with me. You know, as long as I can, I can verify the breedings that you made, you know, which sometimes it's talking to the breeder or or is their breed the breeder and i've known them like for years you know and i know that they've been breeding dogs and what they come down off of you know that's good enough with me integrity still means something you know yeah. and and uh, uh but as far as going that far back and i'd have to do a lot of research and you know i don't know if that's that's if it's worth it to you do it if not just work with what you have now you know yeah, get some because like like you saying, it's some old dogs that were collected that a lot of people don't know about, but enough people know about for you to call you to call around and say, hey, oh yeah, this that yeah. was collected. Like you know, they, they they talk about the old Frisco stuff. They talk about the old uh 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 like, Grand Champion Spike, you know. Yeah, Grand Champion Spike. Like for me, certain after a certain time, Grand Champion Spike, I'd be like, nah, because yeah. I know it was only one breeding left. In like 2001, you know, yeah. when that breed after the breeding of Santos, Sa Sa Santos and them and all that, or even that breed, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's hard but, to verify it. You know? Yeah, because, you know, the little spike uh, uh, semen was there, you know, yeah, you, yeah. certain stories like that. Like we know those type of things we can verify from back then. When you start yeah. talking about the old uh, uh, balls semen that was out there. It was certain old little ball semen that, uh, that was out there. It was certain old buck dogs that were, you know, out there from, from other from other countries and stuff. So yeah. a lot of other countries, you, we can verify certain things, you know, yeah. get behind the scenes and talk to some, talk to some old dog man, email some people and check and yeah. see and see what's going on. And if the breeding can be verified, maybe the best, best choice of action would be to register with another with, with another registry if you choose and that's what you really want to do and then come back and have everything verified with the ADBA yeah. and I'm yeah. sure they'll work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like in I went to Europe, went to Rotterdam and Amsterdam, London. Uh the the one of the guys who uh was with Limey Kennels, he, he stores his own semen. 
So I seen him do that. He's reputable, David. You know, I would trust that. I seen the I seen his storage unit and all that. He does it all himself. The dogs look like they're supposed to act like they're supposed to. You know, they're they're some nice dogs. So, yeah. you know, I don't know when he started it, but he's got them all there. You know. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. So, it's a lot of them like that. That that's, that's been stored like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Know, y'all see him already seeing it. Sound like he got got. Hey, you ain't necessarily yeah. got God, bro. You just gotta yeah. get in the right circles and verify everything right. that you got, and you'll be all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Find somebody reputable, good reputation. Don't don't do no bullshit, you know. Uh, uh, cause it, it it you know they don't want it coming back on them either that they were faking and lying and all that, you know. Go go, good dog men don't do that, you know. It's just shady people trying to make money that do that. Yeah. I, um, I don't see him in myself, bro. I don't see him in myself. And some people in the future, I'm pretty sure, oh, man, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. But I know where I got it from. So just get yeah. to know who you, who you got it from and get to exactly. know uh, the circle. Exactly. Uh, and try to use it sooner than later because 90s, you know, the counts should be pretty low. You know, yeah. lower than it was when it was taken. So keep yeah. that in mind, too. The longer you know they stay on ice, the fucking percentage wise go down. Yeah, it deteriorates. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, That's be true. uh mindful of that too. And just keep everything right. shit, you know? You got them. Fuck yeah. what motherfuckers talking about. Shit, they ain't fucking yeah. helping you clean up water or fucking feet. Not one goddamn dog now. Fuck what they talking about, bro. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still sons of Jeep. It's still sons of Jeep that are on ice out here that people don't oh, know about. Sense. I know camps. I know camps that got it. Rom yeah. Rom sons. I know I know yeah. grand champions. I know a lot of semen that people don't know. Old Mayfield dogs and all kind of shit that are on ice. So it's not impossible. Don't 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 run with that. Yeah. Most definitely. It definitely is sons of Jeep out here on ice. Uh <clears throat> Rasta Man, what's your take on it? Uh, the question again. <clears throat> the question was, uh, with the panel, well, would you buy frozen semen from a grand champion from the 90s with no DNA profile? He said, I just purchased some, but now everyone tells me that ADBA won't register the pups. So he's already thinking about breed. He's Well, he's thinking about, you know, taking that frozen semen, sticking to his bitch with it. And, and but he's saying the ADBA won't register the pups. Okay, so what he should have done <clears throat> from the beginning is found out what the process need to be before he purchased and paid his money, and he stuck with the fact that he can't register. But if you wanted to breed, whether you got uh, you could register them or not. Uh, or if you, he would be able to register them with your registry, wouldn't he, uh, schoolboy? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it, it, you don't have to go to the ADBA. You can school register them. better anyway. Schoolboy shit lit. I'm telling you, my bad old yeah. Jack. <laughs> so, so 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 you can register the dogs with schoolboy. You know, and that's the beauty of our program. These brothers can help you in so many ways. Yeah. From literature to just words out their mouth to pointing you in the right direction. <clears throat> this is probably the best thing going since uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Damn, we need to uh, go over some Bitcoin for this shit, dude. OG shit. <laughs> Back in the day, they used to say, they used to say this, they used to say this is the best thing going since pimping and hoeing. Now it's the best thing going. It's the best thing going since Bitcoin. Okay, yeah. it. See, pimp, pimping and hoeing don't make money like Bitcoin. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, they got them Bitcoin on stock market, boy. <laughs> Nasdaq. Yeah, you ain't lying about that. That's it making some money. You know what I'm saying? That's that lifetime money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. So, uh, but yeah, so uh, you went wrong there. You didn't investigate what you needed to do. But since my brother, schoolboy, has a registry, you're more than welcome to re- register your dog with him 
and and you still can love what you got. Yes, sir. You know, and and it, and it comes from a reputable reputable breeder. Yeah. It's just you yeah. know, uh, I I seen the pedigree. It comes from a reputable breeder. It's just uh, he just you know, some people for yeah. whatever reason, you know, and, and you gotta remember this too. A lot of people have beef with the ADBA too. Like ADBA is not the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some people get into it with them over different issues. They don't like this. They don't like that. You know, it's a lot of different politics to involve. Uh, that, but that's it been going on for years, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Mr. Garcia, I got. To, uh, did I go to you already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ram, you spoke on it. Everybody spoke on that question. Before I move yeah. on. Uh, yeah, and schoolboy, I got to get with you on your registry too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anytime, brother. Just mm -hmm. hit me up. Okay. And we got this. Hey, yeah, here. schoolboy. I, 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 yeah, I need to register some too, schoolboy. I need a private. Anytime, brother. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, hey, brother. Hey, hey schoolboy. We need yeah. to keep two, man. We need to keep two. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, I got a, I got a, I got a yeah. contingency plan when I'm not around no more, so it, it'll be here forever. You know, as long okay. as okay. my family's okay. still alive, it'll. You know, a lot of people yeah. worry about well, what happens when this guy passes on? Who's going to take it over? Some of them don't have, you know, they don't oh, have a contingency man. plan forever. But but oh, I do. Man. I got I got. Man. It's going to so go to daughter-in-law, daughters, grandkids. You know, all so my the stuff is set up that live way. For probably about another three hundred years or more. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. As long as my children keep breeding, grandchildren keep having kids, yeah. I'm probably going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know they're gonna have some babies, man. You know yeah, they're gonna have a they're gonna have a bunch of them. We Mexican, you know. Yeah. 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 So uh, you know, yeah. all my books, everything, everything I do is gonna keep going and going and going. It's already set there up, you, you know. Yeah. There you go, man. That that is man, that is so man, that is so wonderful that you you don't uh you know, groom, you know, the, the, the family yeah. for that understanding, yeah. Yeah. man, you know, because yeah. that's a crucial vibe, man. You you can have yeah. the numbers, but if everybody ain't seeing it, you know, the, the numbers don't even matter. That's but, right. But, but, that's but right. when everybody see it, oh, man, the numbers make a big difference. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I got everybody involved, you know. I do for man. them, so they, they do for me, too, you know. Man, I big take, respect to you, man. Yeah, respect yeah, I, to you, hey, man. Yeah, respect you. to thank you, you, brother, because, you know, the, being that family man and and getting that honor like that, man, shit, man, that's the greatest yeah. honor you can get, man, to yeah. be able to yeah, take the family and turn it into where we become a machine yeah. of thank what you. we do. You know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, that's that's the whole. You got to yeah. think ahead. You know, you got to think yeah. when yeah. Yeah, you, when you ain't point. here, what what's gonna happen? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. we what we what 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 the plan is now? We're gonna do seven eight sports, uh, <laughs> lifetime award for our brother schoolboy. Well, thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Salute, salute to my brother Robert Trucker in that super chat showing love. Appreciate the love, man. He says, What's the name of the dog on the DMX Grand Champion CD? Anybody know? Ram, you know the name of that dog? Man, I was trying to remember ever since I seen that shit uh, when he posted it. Man, I used to know the name of it. They in the breeding. That's an old uh, Soros Cross dog, though, man. Can't think of that motherfucking name. He wasn't no Grand Champion or nothing, no, like that. Right, he just put the dog up there, right? Yeah, yeah, he was a good looking dog. Right, right. <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, anybody who got any information on that, put that in the comment section. And anybody that's looking to uh sign their dogs to schoolboy, register their dogs for schoolboy registry, you can contact schoolboy doesn't have a website for that. You can contact him through uh Facebook Messenger. Now, the link to that is in the description underneath this video. Uh, you'll see it in the description. You'll, you'll see Facebook Messenger, Schoolboy. You know what I mean? You'll see Richard Garcia. So click on that and then contact him, and you'll be able to register your dogs, man. 
Or you Thank could you. hit us up on the uh, Game Dog Talk Instagram page. Just make sure uh, if your shit private, I'm going to follow you first. You know, you got to accept us. Make sure you ain't no weirdo and shit like that. And you already know, don't be asking no crazy ass questions because you will get rejected. Up out of that yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Absolutely. You know me. But yeah, it's uh Instagram Game Dog Talk, all one word. You feel me? Yeah, y'all fuck with Game Dog Talk on Instagram, man. I appreciate y'all, man. And uh we got this has been another successful week. We've been out here for two and a half hours. We got through all the questions and some questions from the chat. So salute to everybody in the building. Salute. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank y'all for y'all questions, man. Thank y'all for the support. We definitely appreciate y'all. Uh, like I said, hit hit up Schoolboy uh, on Instagram Messenger if you want to register your dogs. Uh, if you don't have Instagram and, you know, I mean, oh, excuse me, Facebook Messenger. If you don't have Facebook Messenger and you want, you got Instagram, you can hit us up on Game Dog Talk and we'll get information over Schoolboy. Um, uh, Brother Eli, tell the people, uh, you got any closing words for the people? Yeah, man. Hey, as always, man, y'all be positive, you know, be true to yourself, be true to the dogs and shit. Hell, keep scratching, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Hell, keep keep learning, read, get more information, be as self-sufficient as you can in these dogs, man. Always be open to learn new things. You can check me out on my uh, on my YouTube account. Eli Zachary talks everything. I got information about uh feed where I do a maintenance where I got a maintenance feed video. I will be doing a new video here uh here pretty soon on uh feeding. I like talking feeding, conditioning, and breeding, you know. So I will be doing some things on that uh uh here coming soon. And as me and brother Ram uh talked about, you know, we'll be getting we'll be getting y'all some nice little tidbits uh uh coming here coming here real soon. Yes, so, sir. Just stay no, tuned. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna try. Oh, go ahead, schoolboy. I was gonna say, I just wish you great success, Eli. Keep up the good work, brother. Much appreciated, bro. Much, much appreciated. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna try to bring y'all uh, an interview with Eli, uh, breaking down, you know, one on one interview with Eli as well. I'm gonna try to get that going on pretty soon here. Salute to brother Doug in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation, man. Welcome down, around. Big stepping, man. What's uh, you got any last words for the people? Give go ahead and give us a disclaimer. Hey, man, as always, none of this shit is intended for, nor should it be used towards any illegal purposes. If you is out there like that, man, keep it to yourself. It ain't everybody business what you're doing. You feel me? It's the weekend, so don't be out there drinking, driving. Ubers don't cost that much. Get a Desi, man. You know, stay safe and sucker free. We'll see y'all boys next week, man. Yes, Peace. Sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, my Mr. Rastaman Boone, any last words for the people, brother? Yeah, man. Uh, for each and everyone that chime in on this set, um, be respectful of everything that's been said. Don't take it out the context of what's been said. Just be respectful of what's been said. You know, sometimes people, you can say something and then people twist it up and turn it around and have it all cracked up. But uh, respect to everybody, man. We really appreciate y'all guys. Keep on listening. 7 8 Sports to the maximum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Salute to y'all, man. Appreciate you, brothers. We'll see y'all next week, next Friday. Tune in.